Yes, I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman, Alfred. I'm Batman. I am Batman! I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Vengeance. Greetings, Bat Family, and welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Make sure you visit our website, holybatcast.com. It is your one-stop shop for all things Holy Batcast. But you can also find us all over the internet on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for Holy Batcast, and you will find us. And if you love the show, you want to help support us, you can do that on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. And as always, got to give a big old thank you to our patrons. You guys are amazing. You make this all worthwhile. You make it, you know, a lot easier for us to do. So just know that it's appreciated. And as part of that appreciation, I got to give a couple little shout outs to some new patrons. First of all, uh, it is Mr. Stephen Smith. Hello, Stephen. And welcome to the family. Thank you so much for becoming a patron, especially now, these days. With, the, with everything going on, it is certainly appreciated. Um, our old pal Eric Carter, he was already a patron, but he upped his pledge, which is very cool oh. and totally uncalled for. But thank you anyway. We really do appreciate it. So thank you, Eric. And then Jeff Wildman. So Jeff Wildman is someone who, like, that's a name I've heard for years now. And, uh, yeah, he... He put a ring on it. He made it official. So thanks, Jeff. We appreciate that. So Eric, Jeff, Stephen, you guys are awesome. And uh, yeah, really, truly, from the bottom of my heart, big old thank you. Um, again, patreon.com slash holybatcast if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, it's okay. We love you anyway. As always, um, I'm Andy DiGenova. You can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova. Um, and this episode, we are going to be doing a little bit of a recap on DC Fandom Day 2, some tidbits and interesting little facts and news that came out of that, as well as a couple, I guess, a couple pieces of news that didn't necessarily come from Fandom, but still probably worth a mention. So we're going to do that, and we're also going to review the next episode of Batman Beyond. So joining me for all that, first of all, he is my bat brother from down under. It is Brendan Lowe. Hey, Brendan. How are you? I tell you what, if Eric thinks that upping his pledge is going to, you know, make us get him out of uh, Philip's superhero stress basement, he's got another thing coming. I think that probably is it. Hold on, let me check the notes on this pledge. It says, <laughs> SOS, I can't take this much longer. Please save me. Oh, there's he's probably he's too, probably just joking. There, he's fine. There, there's way too many computer monitors down here. It's driving me crazy. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Eric. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I don't know what we got you into, but uh any, <laughs> Oh, we're, our hearts go out to you during this difficult time. <laughs> RIP. <laughs> yep. If I was in the states, I would mount a rescue, but I'm not. So, uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. I'll send a pizza to your house and tell the guy. And if you hear any screams of help, please help him. <laughs> um anyway brendan hey good hey, to have you back how are you great oh, it's great to be here it's becoming a sunday night uh what's the word i'm looking for ritual, ritual? yeah yeah this is what we do on sunday night we it wrap is. up the weekends together as we should yeah um anyway uh you all probably have guessed no jamie drooley um, it's a, it's going to get worse because it's been bad enough with Jamie because of scheduling. But y'all know what's starting this week? Yeah. It's football season. And as soon as it's football season, Jamie just, he just, he's less interested in Batman for a few months. Well, so depending on what happens, I mean, I, I don't know. And I know you sure as so hell wouldn't know, like if they're doing like a bubble like the NBA did or something. But I know that the baseball started and only went for like a week and they had to stop again. So... Mm. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen over in that country, but I'm sure we'll come to that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, I was wondering the same. I was like, I was like, I was surprised it was starting because, yeah, I didn't know what the plan was because I barely pay attention when I'm in the States. And then now being half a world away, you know, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> exactly. I'm usually asleep when things are happening, like today when I was asleep when fandom was happening. Um, but anyway, we don't have Jamie. We miss him. We love him. That'll never change. He'll always be with us as long as we remember the good times. Um, 
But joining us, we do have a patron. So yeah, I mentioned that I, I've got a list of patrons that I'm trying to get through. Uh, and uh, we finally got to our pal who is joining us this evening. For us, it's the evening. For him, it's the morning. Um, it is Jonathan McKinney. Hello, Jonathan, and welcome to Holy Backcast. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited and very uh, nervous, to be honest. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Just pretend you're at a comic shop shooting the breeze with fellow nerds. That's really all it is. Ace. I'll, uh, I'll do that. I mean, it's funny because I do, I have, well, I have podcasted before myself, but never, um, always just with my partner here in my house. Um, and I've been listening to you for um, probably uh, since when you were on the Batman universe with Jamie Magoo, was it? Yeah. You used to mm-hmm. do. Um, and yeah, the, the, the back cast, I think pretty much since you started. So it's very cool, uh, to talk to you today. Well, it's good to talk to you too. Uh, yeah, I mean this show, Holy Batcast, is now, is now going on its 50th year. So thank you for <laughs> sticking with us for so long. Maybe it just feels like the 50th year, but I can't be sure. Um, No, we're really glad to have you. We appreciate it. And uh, so, yeah, as always, it's your first time. So tell us a little bit about your Batman fandom and then your uh, favorite Batman movie and why. Okay. Um, So, yeah, Batman fandom wise, um, when 89 came out, I was six. So I was too little to to really experience it the way that some of your guests and some of you guys have done. Um, But I remember being at my dad's and he had recorded the 89 Batman film and it was the first I'd ever seen of Batman. I can still vividly remember the the shot that you guys will know is the two criminals, the two thieves are talking and Batman lowers down behind them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I loved, can't, can't place it. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's been a really it's long weekend for Brendan. <laughs> moment, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, See, so yeah, I loved the 89 Batman, but I personally went, bananas for Batman when I saw Batman Returns um, about a year or two later on on video, which we got from we rented it from a video shop down the road from our house and uh, I watched it on the Friday night, I watched it on the Saturday night, I watched it on the Sunday morning and very sadly had to take it back Um, then I loved Batman Forever, I was 12 years old, Um, I loved what Jim Carrey was doing (laughs) me too, me too, Um, so amazing (laughs) So good. I'm right? with you. <laughs> and then, like a lot of others, I think, when I saw Batman and Robin, I uh, I just, I remember walking home from the cinema with my big brother, Chris, and he was sort of, he had his arm around me, comforting me, and I was like, I, it was like someone who's lost his faith, because it was, I was just so confused about what, what I'd watched for two hours. Um, and I didn't really follow the character after that from what was that 97 mm-hmm. um, until you guys will know what film it was it was Batman Begins came uh, so I would have been 22 when that came out and I sat in the cinema and again I can I have vivid memories of lots of the moments from that film and uh, spent the next couple of years getting back into the character Dark Knight comes out and I'm suddenly back reading the comic books again um, and that lasted right through to the Dark Knight Rises um, and in the last few years, I've sort of tailed off a bit with the um, the TV and the, the comics because I've been very busy creatively. So, um, yeah. And also with a lot of the negativity around the, the Snyder cut or the or not even the Snyder cut, but just Man of Steel right through to because I really like Man of Steel mm-hmm. um, and I enjoyed BBS as well. I, I do understand why some fans of Batman and Superman don't enjoy those, but I always did. Um, and then, yeah, when when the the conversation around the the characters on film turned so negative uh, for so long, um, really it was it was yourselves and um, another podcast I listened to that's um, um, another two Australian guys and um, Kevin Smith his podcast that I've kind of carried on following since around about 2016 when um yeah the mm-hmm. the snyder hate and the snyder zeal kind of overwhelmed me a little and i needed to step back and i remember sitting and watching justice league and just finding it really 
sad um, when that song starts at the beginning um, that everybody knows. And I was watching it with my son, who had a lovely time. He thought it was great. He didn't. Uh, so I couldn't engage with the story of, of Justice League at all because um, all I was thinking about was what what did Joss Whedon do and what did Zack Snyder do? And I wasn't, do you know what I mean? I wasn't oh, yeah. thinking about mm-hmm. the story at all. And of course, the, the lip and <laughs> then, yeah, and the, the heat, I suppose, around that <laughs> hasn't gone away. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it was a shame. But um, yeah, my son enjoyed it anyway. So um, so yeah, that's a sort of convoluted way of, of describing my, my fandom. Um, really, the, the peak years for me were from like that 91, 92. Uh, no, I suppose it would have been 93, 94 when I saw Batman Returns on home video, uh, right through to Batman and Robin. And then again, during the Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, my favorite film is either, it depends if the last one that I saw was The Dark Knight or Batman Returns, whichever one I saw most recently is probably my favorite, I think. All right. That makes sense. Cool. Very yeah. cool. Well, great to have you. And yeah, what a journey. But I get yes. it. You know, it's, it's, it's. <laughs> When, you know, around Man of Steel and then especially around Batman versus Superman, when it just became like the Internet's favorite pastime to like take digs yes. at DC movies, it just it just did suck a lot of the fun out of it. It's like even like even if you don't like it, that's OK. Don't like it. You don't uh, have yeah. to. But like, yeah, just it was just a constant barrage. So um happy to be hopefully a little oasis for you. in that. Yes, you are. You very much are. It's always, um, you know, it's not like you guys just love everything by any means i always appreciate the the positivity and the the fair take if you know what i mean yeah that you guys i think give well thanks we we do our best uh, sometimes we succeed sometimes we fail but you know what why do you fall so you can learn to pick <laughs> yourself back up again uh, right. well cool jonathan i'm glad that you were able to make the time for us and i'm glad to have you join us um we do want to talk about well i guess hmm I guess let's talk about the, the pre-Fandom news, and then we'll get to Fandom itself, uh, day two, and some of the stuff that came out of there, and then our experiences with it. So the pre-Fandom news, um, the first thing is last time we talked about uh, the delay in production for The Batman. See, I, I jinxed it because I said, as long as nothing happens on set, we'll be on track for the release date. And because I said that, it ruined everything, but the reason I said that is because the question was asked by our friend Tim Rooney. So I got a message from Tim being like, actually, it's my fault because I should have never asked the question. And I was like, yeah, you're right. It is your fault. So I agree. You should never ask questions. Yeah, because how dare you? How dare you? So uh, this one's on Tim. So uh, Tim, if you could send an edible arrangement to Robert Pattinson saying, I'm so very sorry, that would be great. And I'll even help. I'll even chip in with the shipping with Jonathan's patron money. How about that? <laughs> um, but anyway, the point is, well, I Rob, can take it up the road because it's only uh, fifty miles. Oh, Liverpool see, okay, you can hand deliver it. That'll be terrific. On behalf of <laughs> okay. Holy Batcast and Tim Rooney, we are so sorry you got COVID. It's on us. <laughs> um, Speak now, for yourselves. I want nothing to do with it. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you're you're complicit. <laughs> yeah, my silence. <laughs> you were on the episode. Um, so anyway, uh, yes, Robert Pattinson tested positive for COVID. Apparently, he's doing well. So the latest report is that he's doing great. They think that they're going to start production back up in about a week or so. Um, that makes sense. Two week quarantine is pretty standard. So really, it's just little bit of good news a pretty minor delay so far um hopefully but again you know safety comes first his health and the health of everyone on the production comes first as long as everybody's feeling good feeling healthy and ready to move on and they take the correct precautions to keep everybody healthy then great but still some some good news coming out of that after a slight little setback just a slight one yeah and now because i said that (laughs) <laughs> who am i gonna doom next sorry Don't zoe kravitz that. sorry zoe i love you but i think i just gave you covid um i will say this is uh, this is ridiculous but i'm so sorry i saw, this was making the rounds on twitter but it was like from a soap opera because soap operas are still in production where they're like 
they're shooting the actors separately, and then when they kiss, they do it from behind, and they make the actors kiss a mannequin. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Um, it's probably more realistic than what they usually do. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is I really hope that Robert Pattinson kisses a mannequin of Zoe Kravitz at some point over the next few weeks. <laughs> So, good news. I think that, you know, hopefully the Batman is back on track as long as Robert and everyone else is feeling good, so that's great. Um, But do you know what's not back on track? I'll tell you what's not. Um, So, recently, what was it, a week or two ago? uh, Tenet was released worldwide, and then especially in North America, and the numbers numbers came back, and the numbers were okay considering the circumstances. But... That's not good because a dollar is a dollar. You don't get a couple extra dollars because of the circumstances. The money is the money. So uh, the return uh, it, with tenant in theaters was not a hugely encouraging factor. Um, and even though Warner Brothers did say, oh, we're very pleased with the results and they're in it for the long game and they're hoping that it plays for, for months. Um, everybody kind of was reading the tea leaves and go, yeah, we'll see how happy they are depending on what they do with Wonder Woman 1984. And sure enough, a week or two later, whatever it was, uh, they bumped Wonder Woman 1984 yet again. So now it is set for Christmas Day. So from October, what was it? Was it October 14th? Yes. Something I like that? Say. Okay, maybe, I mean, forgive me, somewhere <laughs> Who in knows? there. Who yeah. knows? It's meant to be November 2019, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's now bumped to Christmas Day, but, you know, at this point, release dates are just, yeah, throwing dart boards and or throwing darts at the wall and, and seeing where you how close you can get. Uh, it's just one of those things where it's like, sure, set a new date at this point. And I think a lot of people have said this. It's like, you know, I, I made a joke about it on Twitter, like many people did. Um, and a lot of people are like, yeah, like, I'm just not excited anymore because I just, I just don't know when I'll ever get to see it. So it's just... You know, I, I will be excited when I get to see it, but it, but at this point, it's just kind of like, okay, uh, whatever, you know, we'll keep waiting. So anyway, it's bumped again, surprising no one. It was kind of expected. Um, but yeah, so obviously, you know, they have, they have a few options here. The option is they stick to December 25th and hope for the best. You know, the option is they just keep bumping it until enough theaters are open and enough people are going that it can be quote unquote normal and they can look at normal grosses or they do finally investigate the uh, premium video on demand. Uh, Brendan, I know you've followed this closely and I know you're disappointed because you're ready to see Wonder Woman in a few weeks. Um, yeah. What do you think? Well, this is the thing. I, <laughs> I told you, but I think privately, I don't know if I'm going to devolve all that information on the air, but um, that's the thing. I wasn't, I wasn't disappointed because I, I expected it to happen. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more pissed off at how it's being handled. Like just the continual shuffling of, Oh, you know, it was, you know, mid October. I will put it at Christmas now. It's like my attitude is if you think things, if you, you clearly you're waiting for one country. Yeah. to be open and operating, you know, it, that, that's just, it's clear that's what's happening because I know you're in a country where you could go and see it if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm in a country where I can go and see it if I wanted to. Um, Jonathan, I think, what what are cinemas like over where you are? They are quiet, but they are open. Yeah, Tennant yeah. is, is showing. Yeah, I mean, the three of us in our respective countries that we live in at the moment could go and see it. Um, it is... I'll, I'll be honest, it's pissing me off that I have to keep waiting for one country to get its shit together so the rest of the world can enjoy what we have the right to see at the moment because we've done everything correctly. Mm. Um, And I know that that opinion might piss some people off and I do apologize for that, but it's true. And, you know, it's, it's really, really frustrating um, the situation that we're in and the fact that, you know, moving it to Christmas, a thing's going to be better over there from mid October to late December. Probably not. So stop either, either pull it completely and just say, you know, release date TBC mm-hmm. or explore other options because at the moment 
continually moving the date. This is its fifth date change. Yeah. Five mm. times it has moved dates. It's ridiculous. So either stop prom- making promises that you can't keep and either, like I said, pull it or you need to explore other options. Mm-hmm. And I only found out during the week too, it's something that blew my mind is with the release of Tenet. And this is Warner Brothers. I don't know what Warner Brothers are thinking. They only gave it to drive-in theatres in cities where normal theatres are open. Yeah, that's What's so weird. What's the point of that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's not going to bump the grosses that much, but it's more money that you don't, you would not ordinarily getting. Mm-hmm. Like, this doesn't make any sense. But, yeah, the handling of the situation has really pissed me off. But I'm, I wasn't disappointed that it got bumped because I knew it was coming. I'm not an idiot. I mean, I'm mm. an idiot, but I'm not that much of an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. It's just it's frustration at the moment. Mm. What about you, Jonathan? Yeah, um, well, my feeling is pretty much the same as yours, Andy. It's, um, it's been, since March, um, a lot of things that I've been looking forward to, and it's not just movies, but... Um, not just things that I'm looking forward to either, just things that I either kind of depend on so that I can get work done, like the schools being open, um, hasn't been the case. So I've been sort of waiting for something to change. That extends to the, uh, the Wonder Woman film um, and the, the James Bond film. The, um, the, for me... Oh, yeah. I, I've got more hopes for Bond than I do Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, so for Wonder Woman, I'm I'm ready. I, I will go to the cinema even with you know with a mask on or whatever. And um, it's 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 much it's much more that it's just been a very depressing year all around, mm. and so that has extended to my anticipation of, of films as well. So I'll um, when I can see it, I will I will get excited in anticipation of that yeah. <laughs> rather than. Yeah. Um, I've got no energy for the enthusiasm while it, it's still potentially not going to happen. So, um, yeah, and that's been, like I say, a lot of things this year uh, waiting for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it would be it would be absolutely wonderful to sit in a cinema um, at this point and, and see the, the DC logo and the characters and then sit there and get to see this film that, um, as Brendan, you were saying, it was last year that it was um, originally going to be um, available. So. We're almost at the year anniversary, aren't we? It's yeah. crazy. Well, both Wonder Woman and Bond, I should have had the Blu-rays by, like, March. Yeah. Because they were both due to come out around November, December last year. Yeah, it's crazy. So I, I understand. First of all, I, I, you know, I've seen a lot of this of, like, of, like, of course I have perspective whether or not I get to see a superhero movie is very low on my list of priorities in my life right now because of, you know, the health uh, and wellness of my friends and family around the world, especially in the United States. Um, You know, my work, which has gone from, you know, a hundred to 200 miles per hour a day with, as we're, as we're racing to finish up the theme park. So it's not high on my list of priorities, but yeah, of course I still can't wait to see it, but I feel like what you you said, Jonathan, is true, is that like I've kind of put all of that excitement just off to the side. And it's like once I know it's actually coming out, I'll revisit it. But until then, I'm just it is what it is. I'm just going to kind of leave it over to that side. And yeah. I, Brendan, I understand your frustration of like, oh, the whole world has to wait on North America, especially the United States. And I get that. Mm. But here's the problem with that is, of course, they have to. Because, oh, I get the business side of yeah, it. Yeah, really the, the, the first movie made $800 million. Half of that came from the United States. Yeah. So it would be different if this was, say, a Fast and the Furious movie that usually makes a billion dollars and 250 of that is from the United States and 750 is from the rest of the world. Then you can afford to take that hit on your North American grosses because you're like, well, it's still going to do fine worldwide because, yeah, the, the theaters in the rest of the world are pretty much open for business. There's a movie here in China. I don't even know. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's 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 a local oh, movie. Oh, but it's, yeah, it's like the second high, like the second highest grossing yeah. film worldwide of the year. It's made over 300 million dollars in China in the past couple of weeks. So 
people yeah. are going back to theaters here. But with Wonder Woman, they couldn't count on the worldwide grosses because so much of that excitement was in North America. So, you know, I understand your frustration because is it I, fair? I should have prefaced no. my rant with that because I like as from a business point of view, of course I understand it. I, yeah. I do. But it feels like the whole, you know, if you've got siblings and one of them is misbehaved so everybody misses out <laughs> like it's it's kind of that kind of thing and it's yeah. just it, it is frustrating well and the worldwide box office matters and some people will go yeah north america doesn't matter anymore but that's not true no that's absolutely not true of course the the rest of the world box office helps support a film but very few films have failed in North America but done well overseas, and that's been enough to save the film. Very few. But plenty of movies have done gangbusters in North America and done crap overseas, and they've still been extremely profitable. So North America isn't the entire picture, but it, it is still a key component. Um, partly, yeah, because for American-grown films... That's your core audience. And also because the studios keep more of the grosses in North America than they do from the rest of the world. So to, keep, to get the same amount of profit from $200 million in North America, you have to make $400 million in China. Yeah. So it's like it does matter. So I get it. I understand the frustration. And, and – I, I think that we're all kind of waiting to see, like, was Mulan successful enough that Warner Brothers is like, well, maybe we can get away with charging 30 bucks too. Um, there were some initial numbers around Mulan. They seemed fine, but not amazing. So I don't know if that's compelling enough for them to go, well, you know what, that's, that's the, the route we go. The number I saw was the whole, it increased their subscriptions by like 67% or something. Yeah, something like that. But like someone came out with an estimate that basically that it grossed like $35 million from that first week of premium VOD. And that doesn't sound great, but the difference is, is Disney keeps more of that money than if it was open mm -hmm. theaters where if they have to split with the theater chains. But still, that still doesn't sound amazing to me. Mm -hmm. um, so whether Disney slash Marvel wants to take that chance with Black Widow, because I'll tell you what, I'm not paying for Mulan. I just don't care enough. I'd probably pay for it's, another it's movie. It's actually showing in theaters over there, isn't it? Yeah, it is in theaters here, but I'm not going to go. I don't yeah. care. Um, oh, you know, it's just, yeah. Yeah, but like, as far as like the premium VOD, like if, if it's a movie that interests me enough, I will pay for it. I'll pay extra for it. I don't mind that. But like Mulan for me isn't that. Black Widow, I'd be a lot more tempted because it's home, you know? Like I could I can watch that. Wonder Woman... I'd pay a shitload more than 30 bucks. Like, I don't mind. Hell yeah. So it just, it depends on the film as far as that goes, but I don't think Mulan is the best canary in the coal mine to determine whether it's viable because I do... The other thing too is the vehicle that they're, which they've released it. Like Disney Plus, for the most part, is available worldwide and it's its own thing. Warner Brothers doesn't have anything comparative to that. I mean, they've got HBO Max, but that's in North America. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they'd have to work out deals or it would have to be like a an app like Apple or something like there'd be somebody else taking a slice of the profit. Whereas with Mulan, as you said, it's it all goes to Disney pretty much. Yeah. But I mean, Mulan, I think, is still available through like Apple and, and some of the other. Oh, OK. I think they are. But they, but then <coughs> they do have to split some money with Apple and with some of those other ones. I think the only time they keep all the money is with Disney Plus. Mm. So it's hard to tell. But again, like. If in a month we hear that they're going to release Black Widow, then at that point it's safe to go, oh, okay, Mulan did well enough that they that it's worth it. Yeah. So Mulan is, is the test, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. But Wonder Woman 1984 should, for all intents and purposes, be a billion-dollar hit. It's a breakout sequel to a much-beloved original. Warner Brothers is like, we don't want to throw this away, even if it is, to increase subscriptions to HBO Max. Yeah. But again, so, it's, it's only in one country. Yeah. So anyway, that's the situation. 
Um, I understand the frustration. Again, for me, <laughs> I, I, I side with all the people who are like, eh, I'm not excited anymore. I'll, ex I'll be excited when I'm a day away from actually seeing it. But for now, I'm just yeah. kind of like, yeah, whatever. Like, keep kicking it down the road and we'll just keep on waiting. Um, I look forward to taking my grandkids. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that's the thing too. Like, again, I, I'm not disappointed that it got bumped because I knew it was coming. It's just the frustration of the, well, now it's this date. Well, now it's this date. It's like, just stop doing that. Like, yeah. that's what's the annoying part for me. Right. But yeah, I mean, like you said, I, I, I should have prefaced what I was saying originally. But yeah, I mean, obviously, I understand the health thing. I totally understand the business side of things as well. But it, it it's still, it's still a little bit annoying. <laughs> Of course. Well, because you're sure. a, a huge Bond fan as well, aren't you, Brendan? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and you that got was, it twice. And that was the first movie that got bumped. Like, that was yeah. the first big one when, when COVID really sort of became a worldwide thing. But it still wasn't like, you know, you know, countries weren't in stage three lockdowns and everything. And yeah. we were two weeks, three weeks maybe away from it. Like, I had my opening night gold class tickets um, to go and see it. And it, it was, yeah, it was the first big movie that they were like no nah, we're gonna pull it and that was annoying <laughs> but then obviously things got more serious and i was you know okay well that makes sense i get it but yeah. i don't know I, i'm feeling more confident with that because they've really kicked up their marketing again in the last week and a half and bond tends to market more for the uk anyway mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you guys are open for business so I, i'm I'm more confident that it's going to get right. released than, than the other stuff. Well, and, and yeah. that goes back to the point I was making is, is Bond is much more of a worldwide brand. Like they do well in the States, but they do much better overseas. So God, who's releasing this one? Is this one universal? It's universal. Yeah. yeah. So like they can probably afford to go, okay, we're going to make less in North America, but guess what? The rest of the world's going to make up for it. Yeah. I mean, they could even do VOD in North America, release it to the cinemas that are open, release it to the drive-ins, also release VOD, yeah. and then around the world, I mean, people will go to the movies to see Bond, but it's an event movie, mm -hmm. and I mean, even when the world's open normally, the UK gets the Bond movies at least two or three weeks before the rest of the world anyway. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, I think it was Spectre, like not spec sorry um skyfall it was came out here in australia five weeks after it got released in the uk right so there was twitter then wasn't there so you were probably avoiding yeah oh, yeah i was avoiding spoilers on yeah. the plate but yeah, <laughs> yeah. and now there's an actual play <laughs> yeah well that's wonder woman 1984 we'll keep an eye on it someday i hope to enjoy it um Again, happy to pay extra for it. And I've seen the same sentiment from, from a lot of fans that, yep, yeah, at this point, most of us are willing to pay a premium price to just be able to see it at home. Um, and I'm sure that Warner Brothers is still trying to figure out if that's really going to be profitable enough. Um, we'll wait and see. But once it finally actually seems real, I'm going to be excited again. Looking forward to it. Yes. It was like at the end of the Superman and Lois panel today, it cut to like a shot of just like the promo art and it said, you know, available in di on digital in 2021. And I had that moment of like, will it be? Maybe. Are sure? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I agree. Yeah. Well, it's a that... like a question mark at the end. Yeah. Right. <laughs> available in 2021. God willing. That was the fine print. Uh, well, we did have day two of DC Fandom today, and uh, first thing I guess is worth mentioning is that they already learned, I guess, some lessons from the first day, uh, because unlike the first day where it was a, a day of programming that just one ran into the next, ran into the next, which caused me to, you know, stay up all night, caused Brendan to get up super, super early, um, in order to catch it all this time, they're like, you know what? Just everything's on demand. You can watch everything for 24 hours as much as you want in whatever order you want. Watch what you're interested in. It's all available for me. I thought that was a huge improvement because I was able to wake up at my normal time and I still had plenty of time to go through and watch things that interested me, but I didn't have to worry about, you know, staying up, being up early, um, you know, tracking what was coming next so I could plan out my breaks and snacks and whatnot. Like 
it gave a lot more freedom of content for people watching. Um, I did see, I think, a little bit of like, of like, oh, I liked it better the other way because I could just turn it on and leave mm -hmm. it on. But I, I disagree. I loved having the option because then I was able to just click around and choose what I liked best or what I was most interested in. Um, and so I, I liked that freedom. So um, what was your thoughts on that change, Brendan? Uh, I think for this sort of stuff, they couldn't do... I mean, we sort of worked out pretty quickly last week when we were running through the program of like, there's no way they can just have this, you know, start playing at a certain time and play through because there was so much. And some of those panels like went for almost two hours. Like there was way too much programming. And I, I, I don't know if the initial plan when it was all meant to be on one day was where everything was going to be on demand, like including your Hall of Heroes. Um but honestly, I, I didn't mind the way they did it. I don't mind the two-day split, obviously. I think that was a really good idea to split it. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment. But I didn't mind the way they ran the Hall of Heroes day because, like I said, I'm used to doing that anyway <laughs> for, for San Diego Comic-Con when the Warner Brothers Hall H panel's on. I've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. um, it's, only, it's only one day a year, so... I, I do like I I really look forward to it and I make it a big event you know um, so I, I didn't mind getting up early and, and just watching it all the way through I found that really exciting and like I said it, it sort of I felt like we were all connected and you know we were chatting at different times and I was joining different conversations and Twitter was a buzz and everything it was it was really cool the only thing I change about it and you and I discussed this earlier today via um, text messages I wouldn't have waited the well, was it four weeks? It was pretty much a month, yeah. give or take um, a week or so. I I would have struck while the iron was hot. I would have had your first week and done it exactly the same as they did. I would have done the second week the following weekend because, I mean, that first weekend hit with such a big impact that, I mean, it, it was your whole H. Let's call it what it is. It was your yeah. whole H panel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your Hall H stuff is always going to be what steals the headlines. It's going to get the most traction and everything. But the beauty of it was the week, you know, that entire week, everyone was still talking fandom, like podcasts. It was on Twitter. It was still all over Facebook. Like everyone in the geek community was still talking about fandom. Whereas as much fun as I had watching the stuff today, and yes, at my own leisure, that was really cool. The, I kind of felt like the buzz had gone. It mm -hmm. was kind of like, oh, yeah, it's it's day two today. Yeah, oh, yeah, cool. Like, I'll check it out. And I did, and I enjoyed it. But I just feel like it was a missed opportunity having it spaced out so much. I think you have that first big – well, it was Sunday, you know, for, for me and Andy. You have that first big weekend of it. You've got hype, hype, hype all week. And then it, you know, you're riding that hype train. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit, day two's here. Awesome. And, you know – it had, it had died down way too much and it just didn't feel like the excitement was there, which I don't think is really fair to the, to the TV and comic stuff um, because it deserves the, the same amount of attention. So that, that's what I'd do differently. I would, I would just bring them closer together. Hmm. I have thoughts and comments, but I want to let Jonathan talk first. So Jonathan, what are your, what are your overall thoughts on how they did things a little bit differently? And I guess just the, the event as a whole. Um, yeah, um, the, the, the second way of doing it where you could pick what you wanted to watch, I thought was more fun, um, because I, like I had two windows open and I was sort of hopping from one to the other, um, trying to get as much of it in as, as I could. The, uh, the first fandom, um, because the, I, I think if there was a, a mix of the two styles, it would have been perfect because you couldn't, you couldn't say here's everything and you've got the Snyder Justice League trailer and the Batman trailer at the same time because you know what I mean you want to mm. make sure that that those events get their attention but there was at times the first fandom where I was sort of not interested in whatever it was that was happening or it was like the gap between and so I was because I watched it all on my computer and I had my for the first fandom I had my kids sort of squabbling and making noises so I wasn't able to um, count on being able to focus when I wanted to 
um, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So for this one, I was I was much happier because uh, you know put the kids to bed and that last night it started at six o'clock here, so I was able to watch like the Harley Quinn um, Q and A, which was fun, um, and a couple of the other things as I wanted to, um, rather than sort of having to watch it at the time when it was showing regardless of what I was doing, I suppose. Um, the only downside for me with the fandom this time was there wasn't a lot of news um, or I, I didn't feel like there was a lot of new information. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of fun, um, um, especially the two things about the Harley Quinn animated show I thought were good fun. But um, And I've been watching the, the, the Dark Knight feature thing, which was good. Mm -hmm. but very much like a DVD extra that you could have watched sort of 10 years ago anyway. But um, yeah, regarding the, the the second way of doing it, the new way of doing it, I think it's probably better for me, uh, but that's probably just because of the way that I'm, I'm consuming it here. Um, like I say, with my children being very loud when they are in the room, it's easier if I can wait until they are being quiet and then watch what I want to watch rather than yeah. trying to, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that's it is I, I totally understand the sentiment of like the first day was really exciting because we were all watching the same stuff at the same time. So what that did was it created an overall conversation on social media and whether or maybe just privately texting between friends or whatever of like what you're seeing in the moment. We were all in sync. The problem with that is they advertised a worldwide event and that schedule <laughs> to the point that, that Brendan was making earlier, that schedule <laughs> was created for the United States. So for the three of us, none of us are in the United States right now. And so the times were really awkward times. I mean, we sucked it up and we made it work because we wanted to see all of the cool stuff. And it was cool stuff. But man, like, I stayed up all night and I was exhausted. It wasn't the ideal way to do it. Um, so... It's cool that it was all happening at the same time, but the time was catering only to North America and the rest of us just had to deal. So to really <laughs> make it accessible for the worldwide audience that you know they've been so vocal about, oh, this is for everyone. This is for DC fans all over the world. The second model allows for that of like, well, you wake up when you wake up, get a good night's sleep, and then please peruse. You've got 24 hours. So no matter when you sleep, you still got time to see as much as you want to see experience as much as you want to experience. And I think there's a lot of value in that. Um, I agree with you, Brendan, is that in that I wouldn't have set it up quite the same way because you're right. Like for day one, it was this huge buzzy event. Everybody was talking about it. There was so much great content that came out of it. And you're right. It was just so much DC buzz for a week or two thanks to that event. And then by the time we got to day two, it was almost like an afterthought. We're like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. We got day two coming. What what's what's happening again? Like what are what do I want to watch? And like you weren't even thinking about it. Um but what I will disagree with you about humbly is that I think they should have been swapped. I think they yes they should have they should have been closer together, but day two should have been day one. You know what? As as you guys were talking, I actually had the same thought. I was like, you know what? They should have actually finished with a bang. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the day two in all of this content, which was great content. I really I loved laying in bed all morning watching a bunch of stuff for day two. But it was all the build up to Hall H at Comic Con. It was all the build up panels. Yes. Yeah. And they're great and they're awesome. But you see them first, you get excited about them now because you're waiting for the big bang at the end instead of doing it where here's the big bang. And now this feels again like an afterthought, like a denouement, if yeah. you will. They should have done it in reverse. They should have done this one first and then two weeks later done what we got with the Hall of Heroes about a month ago and make that like the big bang. And like this would have been the build up. I think that would have been the best way to do it. I will say, and I, I, I find it funny, so please don't take this as a snarky comment, but your first part about the, you know, the the um, Hall of Heroes panel, the time only catering for North America, that's spoken like someone who's usually at Comic-Con. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, like I said I, I'm used to it. I do it every year. I'm awake really early that morning. So the fact that I didn't have to change what I was doing or what I would ordinarily do, but the fact that 
everyone was experiencing it at the same time that's what made it awesome for me so like yeah. the time zone thing that's just par for the course with this sort of stuff unfortunately <laughs> I, I have no problem with that but yeah you're normally sitting in hall h and it's normally in your time zone so yeah fact you had to you had to be like the rest of us for one year it's like come on man well i heard you laugh and i, I almost i expected you to go yeah she was on the other foot now isn't it asshole <laughs> how do you like it <laughs> Um, which is fair because yes, you're right. Usually, usually when they cater the times to North America, that works for me because I usually live in North America. But now that I don't live there, now I feel the pain that you guys feel of like, really? 3 a.m.? Okay, sure. <laughs> so yeah, I think that I think that probably would have been the best way to go about it because yeah, I just didn't see the same amount of attention happening today with day two as was obviously happening with day one. So hopefully next year when they you know hopefully they do this again, they learn those lessons, they they reconfigure it, and and we we see those improvements. But again, I I was very grateful that it was like. I can watch as much or as little as I want on my schedule, on my time, and I liked that freedom. But yes, to your point, you do lose something because I'm like, oh, I'm watching this now. And you're like, oh, I haven't gotten to that yet, but I'm watching this. So we're not in sync. Yeah. Next year's going to be great when they have that the second Wonder Woman 84 panel to hype up the movie's release. That's going to be awesome. Trailer number three. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> so anyway all that said that was just kind of the overall thing still i really you know really loved diving into more dc content today um i guess before we get to the big news uh let's just share i guess some of the things that we watched um because i don't know how much we watched that was the same how much we watched that was different but i think that's kind of interesting and as we said when we ran down the schedule last week we were like wow like there's so much here uh there's no way it's running the way it did the first time, so you can't really watch it all. And some of the things, and here's the thing, on day one, most of the panels were like, the, the longest panels were 20 minutes, right? Like, mm. nothing was, I feel like, longer than 20 minutes. Maybe 25, but like, and I think <laughs> that, to... That Wonder Woman game felt like it went for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. But because I guess now it was on demand, um, a lot of them were longer. And I got to say, I prefer shorter. I prefer short and sweet because I'm trying to see as much as I can. And some of the stuff didn't need, like there was quite a bit that, that was 30 minutes. Uh, and you said there were even some that were like two hours. And I'm like, I don't, oh, I don't yeah, want to take two Wonder hours. The one went for the, the most, like the best part of two hours. It was long. I thought it was a typo when I first saw it. Yeah. But it was really long. So, I respect the brevity of what we got on day one, where it was like 15, 20 minutes and we're out. I, I think that should be the norm because yeah, like there's so much, like let's keep it moving. Especially because I watched some of the half hour ones and they were interesting and they were good, but they didn't need to be a half an hour. There was, there was at least 10 minutes of small talk and extra stuff that we didn't really need that you could have done it in 20 minutes and been fine. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, Brendan, what were some of the highlights of, of what you enjoyed? Well, I know I just said that I thought it was way too long, but I, I did start my morning with DC Down Under uh, for obvious reasons. And like honestly, yes, it was long, but for the most part, like it was really, really good. I will say, because um, the first chunk of it, the first, like the maybe the first 45, 50 minutes or so, um, they were short interviews with sort of all the Aussie actors. So, um, you know, Margot Robbie and um, oh, what's his name? Captain Boomerang. Like they were together. Um, and then, you know, Brenton Thwaites, um, Tegan Croft. Uh, and then I can't remember his name, Superboy. Uh, so the three Aussies from Titans, they all had their own individual little segments for, you know, five to ten minutes uh, brainwave from Stargirl, who I had no idea was an Australian. Ah. Um, he had a he had a little segment. Um, uh, I can never pronounce his name because it's a Maori name, but um, Aquaman's dad. Um, he had a little segment, and like all that was really really cool. Um, I'm, you know, Nicole Kidman. I think could have could have you know spared ten minutes online to to to, to be involved in that. You know, she's Nicole like she's Kidman. She doesn't have to do shit. 
<laughs> uh, they could have talked to you about Chase Meridian, man. Come on. Um, but, oh, but that would have been so, like two hours diving into the psyche of the wonderful character that is Chase Meridian. <laughs> yes. Um, so I mean, so that part of it was really cool. Then it kind of, I will I will make the comment that that it was the, the the guy who hosted that part of it was the dude who was from the Hall of Heroes that did the, the Aussie that did a few little crosses here and there. Mm-hmm. And I was less impressed this time than I was the first time around because he's like, yeah, I'm, I can't remember his name and I'm in Sydney and I'm a huge DC fan. And he's got this shelf behind him that had like, literally it had three figures, one pop and like five to 10 graphic novels. And I'm like, mother, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like I was available. <laughs> I, I could have done this. Um, so you know, and then after that, it went to um, two actually two really well-known Aussie cosplayers who are, I've met both of them. They're lovely people. Um, Miss Danny Cosplay and Cosplay Chris, they hosted a, a big chunk of it as well, talking to costume designers. Uh, and they actually had a really good interview with Lindy Hemming, who's a costume designing goddess. Um, but they were obviously talking about the Wonder Woman costumes and everything. And they, they, they went on for a little bit. Um, I will say... I because just how long it was taking, I did sort of start to skip a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. And then the last part of it, a big chunk of it, it was Tom Taylor, um, Nicola Scott and Boss Logic um, talking about art and comics and stuff. And I will admit, I did kind of skip a little bit through that as well. But overall, it was a really cool thing. Um, I moved on to Stargirl, which was awesome. If you want to do a game for like a uh, a virtual panel, that's how you do it, because it was actually Mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, um, I agree. Whole, that one, I watched yeah. that one too. And yeah, like their game was a game, air quotes, or inverted commas, um, <laughs> <laughs> was was like, tell us five things that people don't know about you. Cause it was, so then it was actually interesting content that was about them as people, but also then factored into the show and the content and the characters. And yeah, it was actually a nice way to the do. The moderator was a nice surprise too. What was that? The moderator was a nice surprise. I know. I was so excited. I love that. So, yes, I agree with you. Sorry. Continue. Uh, Moved on to the Harley Quinn panel, which, again, was a lot of fun. Uh, Superman and Lois, that was really cool. I know there was a little bit of, I guess you can call it news, um, that came out of that, which we can talk about later. We'll get to Uh, all the news after we talk about, like, just kind of the stuff we saw. We'll get there. Uh, I watched the little to the Batmobile thing just because I knew my mate from Sydney, Zach Mihailovic, with his Batmobile was in that, which was nice to see. Um, the Batman Death in the Family uh, panel, which was really, it was actually really interesting. Like they showed some, mm-hmm. um, a few little teasers of the movie and the, I mean, that opening artwork was awesome because mm-hmm. um, I know you watched that one as well. And I, I don't know if it's news, but I just did want to mention it while I think of it. Um, when we were talking about this movie not long ago, I, I was curious as to how the digital release would work, seeing as it's Choose Your Own Adventure. Yeah. And they did say the digital, it's just going to be essentially every different version of the story played out in full. So you can't choose. Like the, the Choose Your Own Adventure element is only the physical disc, like the Blu-ray yeah. copy. Which means movie, I have so. to buy both. But that also means I probably won't be able to choose until I move back to the States because it's too much of a pain to send an actual Blu-ray out here. And then there's no, there's yeah. no guarantee it'll even play on the Chinese player. So that's true. I'll probably buy it digitally, watch it that way, buy the Blu-ray and just let it sit, you know, sit back at Scotty's yeah. apartment until I move back. <laughs> um, Legends of Tomorrow, which was, it was fun. I mean, you know, again, they, they can't, the difference between, I think these panels, what you'd normally get at Comic-Con is normally at Comic-Con, they're filming the new season at the moment. They're not. So it was a lot of just banter about previous seasons and what they've been up to in isolation. So it was what it was. Um, I watched the Pennyworth panel, which was really fun because I do like that show. Um, they unveiled a bit of news, um, of what season two has in store on that one. Uh, I watched the man of tomorrow panel, which was, again, interesting. No news. I mean, it was just it was just nice to hear some of the behind-the-scenes stuff from the movie. Uh, I then watched the feature on Warner Brothers World in Abu Dhabi, which I know you watched as well, um, mm-hmm. which was really interesting. And if it weren't for the 20-hour flight, and that's not including a stopover somewhere, I would love to go to Abu Dhabi, a country I have no interest in going to, I might add, <laughs> just to go to that theme park. I, I've already told you, like, Catherine and I want you and Jess to meet us there. 
It's a 20 hour flight, dude. I Not don't care. <laughs> I don't care. It will be worth it. We'll get two hotel rooms, one for Catherine and Jess, one for me and you. <laughs> I knew that's where you're going, and I was going to say too. Yeah, you said you like things short and sweet. Like we will, we will just be a match made in heaven. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> I watched, obviously the look behind the music, which you know the Junkie XL thing was amazing. I also quick I checked out the um, CNN. Um, they had a little feature on Kevin Conroy. That was really fun. It was sort of him talking about. I only went for like five minutes, but him talking about just his history of voicing Batman. Um, and then I started watching um, Creating a World production design of the DC Film Universe. Uh, but I had to abruptly stop what I was doing because we had other shit come up this afternoon that I had to deal with. Um, but I am hoping to sort of finish that after we're recording tonight before I go to bed. So that was everything I took in. All right. Nice lineup. Jonathan, what about you? Um, yeah, so for me, the first thing I went to was the Harley Quinn stuff because um that cartoon is really good i um, i think that's hilarious actually the um <clears throat> the first time i watched that I, I wasn't prepared for what it was and um, i thought it was going to be you know a, a cartoon about dc characters um, <laughs> well it is to be fair that's that's not inaccurate <laughs> <laughs> yeah um just you remember the, the first scene on the boat i think Anyway, so yeah, I watched the, the Harley Quinn panel and the q and I thought Alan Tudyk was very funny. Um, the Q&A, again, I think last week, Brendan had said that you were hoping for an announcement about season three, and there was like a reference to it, but she didn't. Yeah, she just said, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I made a joke about the executive or whatever. Um, so that was good. I watched The Man of Tomorrow, the film, because um, I hadn't seen that. Um, before I don't know if you if it was available before the way that they presented it it sounded like it was only available on the fandom and then well with the initial lineup it was going to be the world premiere when right. they were meant right. to do it all in one because it was like a week hitting, before the release yeah yeah it was hitting digital like in a few days time after that but it's been out on digital now for almost a month mm. right ah okay um yeah I enjoyed that I thought it was um it was good fun it was did you go um I was trying to find out if that was based on a comic book. Um, no, I think it's an original story. It's an original story. They took um, uh, inspiration from a few different sources. Right. And one of them wasn't Earth One, which really surprised me because that's yeah. the vibe I got watching the movie. <laughs> well, because my family and I just started watching the, the Dean Cain, Terry Hatcher, Lois and Clark TV show. And, and the premise is the same. Like Lex Luthor's doing a spaceship, and there's some of the dialogue is the same. I the, got a um, lot of Lois and Clark vibe too, particularly with right. his parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Jonathan literally says um, that there's lots of powerful people who want to, you know, investigate you and probe you or whatever if they find out about you because they've been like Superman's been cited not as Superman but as Clark flying in Metropolis. Mm. The same exact thing. So I was like, that's. I, I assumed that it was based on a comic book from before Lois and Clark and that Lois and Clark had also used this, like some of that dialogue, which is very similar <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Um, and then, yeah. And just weird that yesterday I started it and then today watching the, the film um, and then the dark Knight, the, the fire rises um, feature thing. Um, there was like, that was really long. So I was kind of spacing that out, and I think I got about half an hour of that left when when we started the podcast. So that was um, that was originally released on the um the special like when they did that first right. big special. That's what I thought. Ray box set. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's that makes sense. Okay. That, unless you got that box set, you didn't get it. Right. That makes sense because I it feels very much. It doesn't feel like there's anything new about it, um, which I guess is is why because it's not new, but. Um, what else did I watch? Let me have a look. This is where I, I wrote was, a list because I knew I'd forget. <laughs> I, I didn't write a list because I like to live on the edge, but I will say <laughs> um, 
all of that, like like all of the the panels and stuff, I understand making that available for 24 hours because it's a very special thing. It's part of the event. I get that. But all of the stuff that was, I guess, in the insider verse that felt mm. it felt like a lot of like archival DVD extras, like the yes. the Dark Knight trilogy one, or or the costumes of Batman Returns or the Batmobile stuff. Like there's all kinds of stuff, but it's a lot of it's old ish. That stuff I feel like should just be readily available. Like when you're done, put those on DC Universe because I will happily yeah. peruse those in my spare time on DC Universe. And they're not they shouldn't be that exclusive because like again, it's it's kind of old anyway. But I just think that would be like a very easy thing to do that wouldn't cost you anything. You've already got the files. They're already yeah. ready to stream. It's just like a YouTube channel. I mean, yeah, again, pop them over DC there. DC Universe isn't everywhere. Like put them on a YouTube channel or something. Yeah. So I mean, I, it's just a thought I had. I was like, I was like, I should be able to access this stuff whenever I want, but it makes me sad that in 24 hours it's it's gone. Yeah. Um, well, the only other things I found that I watched were there was the Wonder Woman 84 panel with Patty Jenkins, the Batwoman panel, and then the uh, the coolest thing was the music from the Snyder Cut, the Tom Hulkenberg score. Nice. Um, there was cool. a lot of overlap there, which is cool. So uh, I watched the Stargirl thing that uh, that you mentioned, Brendan. Um, the first thing, the very first thing I did watch was the Death in the Family because um, it was it was towards the top of the list, and it was the first thing that like I was like, oh yeah, I definitely want to watch that. Um, so I I agree with you. Like it looks awesome. I just I love listening to John DiMaggio anyway. Um, so it was so fun to see <laughs> he him. He was a hoot in that panel. Oh he was God. A ball. His his uh, impressions of Dietrich, Dietrich Bader, Bader? Yes. <laughs> and then Mark Hamill was awesome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I watched that. I thought that was really great. I can't wait for that. That's coming out first week of October. But you're yeah, like as you said, I'm like, well, I guess I'm watching it non-interactive first. Eventually, I'll get get the disc and be able to to, to choose the, make the choices at that point. So. Uh, so yeah, I watched that. I watched Stargirl. Um, I watched the two comic panels. I watched Three Jokers and I watched Joker oh, War. I didn't write mm. that down. Yeah, I watched yeah. Three Jokers as well. That was really good. Same here. Yeah, yeah those are both great. Um, it's so funny because I've seen a little bit of like fans on Twitter arguing which one is better. Like, oh, now that Three Jokers is out, I don't care about Joker War or Joker War is better than Three Jokers. And I'm like, I'm really enjoying them both. So F me, I guess. I don't know. Like... <laughs> Like, I feel like we have two really good Joker Batman stories happening simultaneously, and I'm just happy about it. So I thought they were both great, and I loved watching both of those panels. Um, so I watched those. I watched the Superman and Lois one. Uh, I watched the Doom Patrol one, which was pretty oh, I cool. That one. Yeah, yeah I, did, I did watch that one. It was really cool to see the guys inside the Robot Man suit and inside Negative Man. And oh, to give... Nice. To give them a chance, I guess, a little bit of the limelight um, because of how much that, acting actually. they do without their voices, just with their bodies. It was actually really cool to see that. Um, so, yep. So I watched Doom Patrol. I watched Harley Quinn, the panel. Um, as you said, uh, that of course, the question came up about season three and everybody just said, I hope so. So yeah. seems like the jury is still out on that, which is a bummer, but it was still a really love, fun panel. I love the shit they were putting on that producer for his beard. <laughs> Oh my yeah, god! I, <laughs> I love Ron Funches. He's, he's amazing. So cool. <laughs> he's amazing. I love when he said when he said, "Yeah, people tell me they love what I do, but I'm just being me." And I'll tell you, a few years ago, that was not met with much acclaim. <laughs> <laughs> I love it how they said too that we all used to work on a show about you know a DC show together that had no superheroes. And people didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except I did. I'm like, I'm one of the few that liked Powerless. I thought it was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it too. <laughs> I thought it was funny as hell. Um, I didn't realize the Kite Man was that dude, and I I mm. already forgot his name. But he's like, I've seen him pop up in like TV shows, mm. and he's really funny. And I was like, oh, that's him. That's hilarious. Um, so yeah, he's that one was really fun to see the the Harley Quinn stuff. I've got to imagine that that they'll get renewed. Like the show is too popular to it's not. It's really popular. You know. Um, so yeah, I watched that. Uh, like you said, I watched the DC thing about uh, Warner Brothers World in Abu Dhabi. Um, that is crazy because the design company that created that was Thinkwell Group in LA, and I used to work at Thinkwell Group. 
So when when Thinkwell came up, I was nearly gonna message you. I'm like, I'm sure Andy used to work for them. Yeah, yeah. So I worked there when they were finishing up the WB Park, but I wasn't working on the WB Park. So I saw a bunch of that stuff as it was being built and being created and everything, and I just had to keep my mouth shut now that it's out there. Like, yeah, it's it's amazing. And it was just so weird though that we were watching this and I was like, oh, the moderator, that's my old boss. Dave Cobb, that's, you know, that's the guy you used to oh, chat wow. about. Like, that's the guy, you know, he, he and I would chat about superheroes in the break room. <laughs> like, like, I know these guys. It's just weird to see, like, coworkers on this yeah. panel. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, the D.C. areas of that park are truly outstanding. And I'm a little biased because, yes, I used to work there and I know them. But at the same time, as a D.C. fan, no, they're amazing. Um, yeah. I say it as a fan, also as someone who works in the industry. And... Yeah, the only downside is it's so darn far away because it's beautiful. So I'm going. I don't care how long the flight is. I'm going to suck it up, pay what it costs, and I'm going. And we've got time to convince Brendan and Jess to meet us there. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. Um, But yeah, like the environments of Metropolis and Gotham. And then they, you know, they did little snippets of, of the major attractions, which are so cool. And yeah, man, like, I mean, it's... It's the DC theme park we've all dreamt of, but it's just on the other side of the world. Um, yeah. So yeah, we we I, I I watched that. I watched the virtual ride through of Batman Dark Flight in Macau. That very similar to the old Batman ride here in Australia, like obviously a different story and stuff, but mm-hmm. similar sort of thing. That was cool. Yeah. That was very cool, and I've been trying to get to Macau to see that in person. Um, but unfortunately I, I think it's closed now, which makes me very sad, but at least I got to watch it today online, but not the same, but still cool. So that's a, it's a flying theater attraction. And again, I just like that it's preserved for posterity, you know, as, as someone who loves theme parks, who works in theme parks, theme park attractions, I consider they're like films, they're works of art, but unlike films, when they get taken down, they're gone, you know? Um, and so I, I, I feel like our industry needs to do better about documenting them and saving them for posterity. And it's not the same as writing it, but it's something, you know, preserving all of the hard work and, and creative thinking that went into these attractions deserves to be preserved. And for, you know, for nerds like us who are like, I'm never going to get to Macau, at least you can experience it in some way. Yeah. So yeah. I love that they had some of that, but like more of that, please, in my industry. Um, uh, what else? What else? I feel like that's the bulk of what I watched. It's a shame they didn't do like a, a movie world. Like yeah. have something from here. That would have been cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, because we talked about the old um, the old Batman attraction at Movie World that was based on Batman Returns. Yeah. And yes, I can find video on YouTube. It's not the best, but it's something. But if that had been professionally shot and preserved to go, okay, this attraction's going away, but now we've got it on record, like... I would pay on iTunes 20 bucks. I'd pay 20 damn dollars to have like a, a beautifully preserved video of that attraction or yeah. throw it on DC universe. You know, like that there is an audience for that stuff. So anyway, I think that's the bulk of what I watched. Um, you know, I watched a couple of the little things. Like, like you said, I watched the, the quick little junkie XL thing. I watched the quick little flash Q and a, which was two minutes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was an abundance of riches today. And yeah, you just have to pick and choose what, what was of most interest to you. Mm, yeah. Um, Jonathan, did you come up with anything else that you, you'd forgotten? I know you said you were um, going to go back and look. <laughs> the, I think you mentioned it. Um, uh, best move on, I can't remember. But I think you mentioned something else that I'd forgotten. All um, right, well. Something and, um, Brendan had said he'd forgotten as well. It doesn't matter. Oh, three, three jokers. I'd forgotten that I watched right, that Right, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. The, the, with Jeff Johns and um, the artist whose name I forget. Jason Fabach. Yes. Who's amazing, by the way. Like, I, his artwork is terrific. I, I would call him, like, the Jim Lee of today. Like, right. he's, he's so good. Um, and he, I, I uh, like that he, he even talked about how he was inspired by Jim Lee's hush. And I'm like, you can tell like in a good yeah, way, yeah. like you can tell that that's what, uh, that was. So 
Yeah, very cool. All right. Well, um, so along those lines, uh, we mentioned, yeah, we mentioned Stargirl. There was no real big news that came out of that, but it was it was so cool to see Leah Thompson as the moderator. <laughs> it was fun. I love her. She's great. Um, but yeah, like a lot of talk about, you know, being excited about season two and all that, but really not a lot of info. Um, but I loved that they talked a lot about Grundy and that Grundy will be back because I don't remember if we talked about it, but it's worth saying Grundy and Stargirl looked amazing. I loved that design and I loved how he looked in that show. Yeah. He looks so cool. Yeah. It was so great. Um, so yeah, no real news because they talked about season two, but we already knew, I think that was already confirmed. That wasn't really news. No. Um, but, uh, I, I mentioned, I watched doom patrol. They did confirm that they're getting season three. So that was, that was good news. We, again, we all assumed, especially cause season two ended on a cliffhanger, but it was nice to get confirmation that they have been picked up for season three, which is great. Yeah. People seem to love that show. It's a great show. Do you so, not, Brendan? What's that? Sorry. No, do you not love it? No, I like it. All right, cool. Yeah, it just, it's just, it's one of those things, it's so bizarre, like, it's such a random-ass show, and, you know, it's the sort of the one that you'd think people would be a bit cold on, but everyone seems to love it. It's, yeah, it's really cool. I'm glad mm-hmm. that it's getting the, the love that it is. Cool. That's so acclaimed, yeah. So, great to hear that. Again, not a shock. We all assumed it was going to happen, but it was great to get confirmation. Um, another confirmation of another DC Universe original uh, is Young Justice. So we had been waiting to hear about a fourth season of Young Justice. They did do like a weird like radio play, but I didn't watch it because I was less interested in a radio play. <laughs> so, um, but I guess at the end they did confirm season four is coming and it is called Young Justice Phantoms. What if Ben Affleck will be the bomb in it? I am sure he will. Um, but they didn't really give any info that I could find other than that's the next season. We're hard at work on it. It is coming. So that's great news. Um, you know, I've, I've mentioned many times how much I love that show. It is so interesting, though, how they rebrand every season to give it its own personality, its own feel, its own arc. Um, and so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what what they mean by Phantoms. So that's cool. I can't wait for more. What else do we got here? Uh, We mentioned the Superman and Lois panel. Uh, It was, you know, because they haven't even started shooting the show yet, there wasn't a lot of news. There was a lot of talk about what they're excited to do. Uh, That includes like the fact that they're going to have the sons and the sons are going to be kind of teenage age. Mm -hmm. So that was interesting. Did you notice that Tyler Hecklin had like a shelf full of skulls in his house? I I did. That was a little weird. I'm like, either he's decorating for Halloween early or he's just a weird dude. <laughs> either way, I'm good with well, it. But I was just like playing the Phantom instead of Superman. The I know. I was just like, what the heck? I love that. I mean, I, I will never judge you for a, a shelf of skulls if you choose to keep it in your house. It was just unexpected. <laughs> maybe those are some of the maybe those are some of the supervillains he's killed over the years. He snapped their necks like Zod and just kept their skull <laughs> as his trophy. One thing I didn't know about the show, I don't know if this had been announced previously or not, is uh, that it's going to be based in Smallville. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that was yeah, interesting. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, and the fact that they're really leaning into the kids is interesting. Uh, they talked about Lana Lang is going to be present. Um, so it was interesting. I saw a little bit of, of kerfuffle about that. Some folks were like, oh no, like they're going to make it a, a, a love triangle. And they even said, they're like, no, he's not going to cheat on Lois with Lana, but it's more about like, how does having your ex around affect your relationship? Mm. And I'm like, that's actually kind of interesting. I can't remember how they worded it, but they said that like, you know, there's a, a terrible event or something that, that forced them to come back. So, I mean, I'm, and he said it, you know, with, with small business and things, like it kind of plays into with what's happened in the world, even from like 2008. So I'm wondering if obviously something will happen and they'll need to come back and run the Kent farm. Like that'd be, yeah, 
Yes, I mean that that's what I would assume would be what brings them back to to Smallville. But yeah, like you were saying about like the Lana thing, like that was announced ages ago. Like they they cast that role. It's uh, I can't pronounce her surname, so I do apologise. But it's Emmanuel Chiriqui, I think. Oh, um, anyway, she, I, from, I from, completely missed that. Yeah, from Entourage. So that was announced. I can't remember exactly when, but it was quite a while ago. Um, huh. Yeah, not not to sound like a dirty male, but. I'm sorry, Elizabeth Tollick, but when you ne- if you put Lois and Lana in this universe next to one another, sorry, Lois, it's Lana oh, all the way. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> she is a fine-looking woman. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, th- I, I really liked the stories they were telling about um, when they were shooting Elseworlds. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, like how Tyler was there with the plaid shirt and he ripped it open, you know, to re- unveil the S and you know, everyone on Grant set, Gustin gasped. Yeah, like yeah. audibly <laughs> gasped, and you know, like they were all giddy, and they had to do the take several times because everyone was just losing their mind over it. Like, yeah, there was some really fun. St- I mean, yeah, they they obviously haven't started filming yet, so but there were some really really fun stories that, that went along with that panel. It was cool, and I actually quite liked them all, like drawing the Superman logo too. Yeah, that was that was fun too, and and your yeah. pal Jim Lee, who you never get tired of. <laughs> no. He was, why do you hate was, Why do you hate lot, Jim Lee, Brendan? I don't hate Jim Lee, but there was just a lot of there was a shitload of Lee in that first first fandom day. He was everywhere. That was actually what they were going to call DC fandom was just a shitload of Lee. <laughs> shitload of Lee. <laughs> More Jim Lee than you can handle. Um, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, they, they shared a little bit about kind of their approach to the show, the fact that they have teen kids, all that good stuff. But uh, the big news, I guess, um, is that Superman will get a new suit. So that was kind of cool is that they were like, yeah. yeah, you know, the suit we built, it was for the crossovers. It was for the occasional appearance. It wasn't really built for a weekly show. So, yeah, we're going to get him a badass new suit, which is cool. I, I like the suit that we've had thus far, but I'm always open for a, an upgrade. Mm. I'm, yeah, I'm keen to see it. Hmm. Why don't so, they bring the trunks back? Oh, great. I can't wait to argue about it. <laughs> uh, except I never argue about it because I don't care. But yeah, yeah. It's, I, I guess I'm I can't wait to see other way. people argue about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess that was the news that came out of the Superman and Lois panel. Um, and then uh, kind of hidden away on another page was a little Q and a about the flash movie. And I saw people kind of running with those quotes and I even had to go find it. I was like, where the heck are they getting this from? So yeah, there was a little Q and a about the flash and a couple interesting quotes did come out of that. So, uh, the first one was, uh, Andy Muschietti talking about, uh, the question was about the tone of the film. Uh, and he said, well, my flash, it's not going to be light or dark in tone. It's going to have everything. What you see in The Flash is a very deep emotional story, but it's also going to be very funny and a great epic adventure at the same time, and also terrifying sometimes. And then he even mentioned that, like, if you've seen It or It Chapter 2, you can see that, yeah, he likes a little bit of everything. He likes it to be scary and exciting and funny. And um, so I know that some, you know, some folks were wondering what's that tone going to be like. Interesting comments by Andy Muschietti. Uh, Thoughts on that, Brendan? Oh, I mean, I, I, I honestly didn't even, I saw that panel and I thought it was just kind of like the, the Q and a section from what we saw the other week kind of removed and put in its own little thing. So if I'd have known it was new material, I would have watched it, but yeah, I mean, I'm just excited. I, I, I am so excited for this movie. So whatever they have planned, I am completely on board. Mm -hmm. yeah um and then they asked uh they asked ezra about the new costume and he goes i haven't seen it yet but everything i'm hearing is good he said you know it seems maybe like it in many ways it'll be a little more comics accurate but in some ways it will be a little different it'll be unique so you know he was kind of you know he didn't didn't really have a lot to share other than he was excited about it and he hasn't seen it yet so that's fine um but then this other thing came up that i thought was really interesting and this was from barbara muschietti Um, She said about the Flash film, she said um, it is inspired by Flashpoint, but it's not a direct adaptation. Uh, She said there are a lot of DC characters in it. Flash is the superhero of this film because he is the bridge between all these characters and timelines. And in a way, 
it restarts everything and doesn't forget anything. Hmm. That's cool. Very interesting. So yeah, Jonathan, any thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I saw that the um, it restarts everything. It doesn't forget anything. Um, I'm very excited as well for this. I think when they announced, I think it was at the last fandom um, that Michael Keaton was going to be in it, or was it a rumor that came out right before that? Is that confirmed? It, it was. It, I mean, I, it seems all but confirmed, and yeah, it came right. out a few days before fandom day one. Right. Yeah. Um, to me. If you were to tell me that any of the previous actors to play Batman, because I know Ben Affleck was um, confirmed or, again, all but confirmed at the time as well. Um, and obviously a lot of people were very, very, very excited about that. Um, I recently saw him in cinema, in the cinema as Batman. So, yes, I am excited. But to me, uh, Michael Keaton putting the bat suit on and sitting in a cinema and seeing that is... 100% the reason I'm the most excited for that film. Um, the fact that it's going to be like the Flashpoint comic or the Flashpoint animated film, that's great as well. I think we're probably going to see a alternate Themyscira and an alternate Atlantis and who knows what else, because they've got those characters ready cinematically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it would make absolute sense to me that if that's what they're going to do, they've got the, the material already They've got the, the actors on both sides ready, I guess, if they can afford to throw everybody into the film, which it sounds like they are planning to. Um, then I think it's going to be really exciting. And I like The Flash. Um, I like The Flash in, in the Justice League. I, I, again, whether or not he's going to be anything like that um, in anything else, we don't know. <laughs> but um, certainly the... Rest when, it, when I first saw the headline that they were going to restart everything, I, I, I'll admit I was a little bit fatigued by the thought of that mm -hmm. um, because you, it's been done a lot, um, not necessarily on a, on a big screen, but it's, it's something we're all familiar with. And it sounds like you always worry that the reason that they're going to restart everything is because if they want to sort of um, slice off some of the more toxic outside elements um, around some of these issues or some of the people who don't want to come back. Uh, if that's the case, and then they've got two hours to tell a story about The Flash, and if it's Flashpoint, then it's about his mother, and you want to be connected to that, but they're also trying to, um, yeah, like close some doors and open some new ones the danger for me anyway is that it might be too much to accomplish well. Um, but that said, like I say, because Michael Keaton's going to be Batman, I don't, that kind of like just washed away that sort of fatigue <laughs> as soon as it set on me. So um, yeah, I'm really hopeful that they'll, they'll be able to recreate Tim Burton's Gotham, at least some of that aesthetic. Um, mm -hmm. And the music, if I know that it probably won't be Danny Elfman, but you know whoever writes the music, if there's that theme, and I'm in a cinema and and it's done properly, because I know that there was bits of it in Justice League, um, and it was Danny Elfman again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it didn't feel like Tim Burton's Batman movies to me yeah. in the Justice League, whereas it might this time. Well, and I think. I think, yeah, with the return of Michael Keaton, even if Danny Elfman doesn't score the film, yeah. you've got to use that theme for that Batman. Yes. You know, yeah. like, to your point, like, you know, unpopular opinion, I liked hearing it again in Justice League, but no, did it did it entirely fit? It didn't. Um, especially because they used it, but it, it was like they were, they like half used it, but they were yeah. afraid to go too hard on it. And it's like either yeah. commit, either do it or don't, you know? Um, and they kind of half did it. And I'm like, well then, you know, don't bother. But for this, because it's the return of that version, I think yeah. you got it. The music is synonymous with that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just want to see the car. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you yeah. got to bring the car back. Oh. Um, I know that you car. guys... Um, you guys were talking about the possibility of uh, Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck having a fight. <laughs> um, and, and I think, Andy, you were, you were, you, I don't know if you 
if this came up and you hadn't thought about it before, you talked about it on the podcast, I think either last time or the time before. But yeah, that, if that happens, I know that the two Captain Americas fought in Endgame, but I'm not huge on on Marvel particularly. Um, to see Ben Affleck and, and Michael Keaton beating each other up is, uh, well, I don't want to think about it too much because then if it doesn't happen, I'll be... Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I mean... <laughs> I don't know if we talked about them fighting, but I think that I think that the question maybe came up is, will they meet? Um, right. And that's and that's a great question, like because you can do it either way. So it'll be interesting. But you're right. Like I'm kind of trying to keep expectations in check. I don't expect them to fight, but there is certainly a possibility <laughs> they could meet. And I think, I think it was it you, Brendan, who said, "Well, I mean, like part of the reason Ben Affleck might have said yes is he gets to work with his childhood Batman." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so, look, I've seen both their fighting styles, and as much as I love Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know what he's... We don't know it what becomes the Batman-Bane fight. If he can strap a bomb to his belt, I don't think he's got much of a chance. <laughs> Affleck would break Keaton over his knee, and it would become Nightfall. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Brandon, what, were your, what was your take on uh, Barbara Muschietti's comments here? Um, I mean, I, again, I, I really wish I'd seen this panel, <laughs> um, but again, it's, it's all, it's the, the takeaway for me is that it's, it's all very exciting. I mean, this movie, it's shaping up to be, I mean, I, listeners, if they've been listening for a long time, they'll remember how excited I was for BBS. Uh, <laughs> um, this movie the way it's going could potentially top that i mean it, wow. it, it's looking like being a huge huge just not not just a flash movie but an event movie yeah um, yeah and yeah i i'm here for it i can't wait yeah i i agree with that and i will say i was able to find the video that had andy's muschietti's comments but i couldn't find the video with barbara's so it was in there somewhere i guess that was the other thing it was is yeah, it was hard to sort through and find everything I needed to. So hers, I just found through a news article that was reporting back on it, but I wasn't able to find the actual video. Um, okay. But her comments, I think, are very interesting. The fact that there are a lot of other DC characters or heroes in it, I, to your point, I think that's super exciting. That's really cool. It's one of the things that you can do with a movie like this, with a flashpoint scenario. Um, so take advantage of that. And to your point, this is only going to make this movie a bigger event, you know? Like, you're going to get so much more hype around it because, yeah, it's the first Flash movie, but there's also all of this extra stuff happening. Um, I still understand the concern of certain fans of, like, you know, just don't take the focus away from the Flash too much, and I agree with that, and I hope that they don't. Um, but there's a way to do it, and, and, and it seems like they have a plan for that, so that's really exciting. The comments about resetting things, it does concern me because as we've said in the past, it's like you don't want to throw out everything because there's so much that's still working and ongoing that you want to preserve, especially Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Shazam. Like, so if resetting everything is really just about resetting a couple things to set it up for future films, great. I just hope it's not a true reset where we start from zero because we've already built up so many other great elements in this universe that I don't want to lose. Yeah, um, you, you, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Exactly. Mm. So, very interesting. But I, again, I don't think they would because it just doesn't make sense that they would, you know, because of, of the, the slate that is planned for the next couple years. You couldn't reset some of that at this point. So, we... We are fairly confident they will reset Batman, but the other pieces, you know, they don't have to. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, and then the last piece of big news that came out, and again, this is something I saw on Twitter before I even found it on the fandom page, because again, it was labeled a little strangely. Um, this was a little minute and a half clip of Junkie XL, a.k.a. Tom Holkenberg. Is that how you say it? Holkenberg? Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, I just love that a guy whose name is Junkie XL looks like, you know, <laughs> your crusty Uncle Tom who works down at the pharmacy. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, he was a quick thing. He's like, oh, I'm so excited to be back on Justice League. There's a lot of work to do, but I want to share this little preview with you. And he shares uh, a little snippet of music that he called he called part of the new Justice League theme. Um, but he also mentioned it's part of an action scene. And so he shared it. I'd say, you know, if the whole the whole video was a minute and a half, the, the music was probably like a minute-ish or maybe just shy of. Um, and I think I will just drop that music in right here for our listeners to enjoy before we talk about it. So he shared that, and uh, a lot of people very excited about it. So Brendan, you already mentioned that that you were super into it. Oh mate, I loved it. Like when I was watching it um, this afternoon, I messaged you straight away because I know you're a score guy, and I was like, if you haven't already, you need to check out the the segment on the music because ah oh, that 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 score was. <laughs> I, I don't want to you know be shitty and and you know crap on on what Danny Elfman did for the theatrical cut because he like everybody else he was given a job and not a lot of time to do it and that's what we got um, you don't you don't have to crap on that score because trust me Twitter's doing it for you okay <laughs> um, but what I heard today it was effing awesome man like it was really good <laughs> I, I, I loved that little snippet that we got Jonathan your thoughts uh, yeah, I loved it as well. Um, this is actually my job. Uh, well, one of my jobs is I'm a, a film composer. Oh, so I'm also interesting. A, um, yeah, I'm also a score guy. Um, Excellent. Uh, obviously. Um, the Yeah, I think what Danny Elfman did in the theatrical, I don't even really remember it because it was very sort of traditional, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, this feels very much like what Junkie XL Tom Holkenberg sort of has has delivered before i think his mad max fury road score is relentlessly brilliant mm-hmm. um i i mean when he when that whole year 2017 when he was replaced and everybody changed completely the direction that they were going in with that film i did wonder why because he had i mean I don't know what he'd done on BVS and what Hans Zimmer had done. And it's fair to probably assume that Hans Zimmer did the Superman aspects of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe it's fairly, I think it's a fact that Junkie XL did the Batman stuff in yeah. BVS. Yeah, because yeah. they, they even said that. I think Hans Zimmer said, well, I just did Batman for the Dark Knight trilogy, so I want mm-hmm. to, to hand that to someone else. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so the the Batman theme and and surrounding music in bvs was was him was junkie xl yeah um so yeah it was hopeful and it was it had the the very like junkie xl and hans zimmer can both deliver this very sort of complete wall of sound if you know what i mean it's not Mm -hmm. necessarily it doesn't sound like you're watching an orchestra perform a piece of music it sort of sounds cinematic as as it's kind of primary uh, descriptive style um and it was it was brilliant it was impeccable i think yeah I, i've got nothing else to say other than <laughs> I, I will really enjoy listening to it when i'm watching it awesome uh yeah i think it's i think it was very promising i really liked it i mean it's so short that i'm not i'm not like losing my mind just yet i think it's a very promising snippet of music from the film and i can't wait to hear more but i had to listen to it a couple of times because i was like well it's i mean it's just a little snippet uh but it sounded really cool and what i liked about it is it's it sounded different than what i expected from from junkie xl because yes because i tell you like he's done a lot of scores and a lot of them i like some of them i thought are 
kind of forgettable. Like he did the Deadpool movies. I don't remember any of the score in those movies. Yeah. Um, but like, I love his Fury Road score. Yeah. But I don't love the dun, 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 dun <laughs> in BVS. I just like, that's your Batman theme. Like that's what you did. Um, so like I, I was always just a little worried about him doing Justice League mm. because I'd never heard him do something truly heroic, you know, and like you're he, removing Zimmer as well. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, exactly. Like BVS at least had the nice counterpoint of Zimmer. So I just, and, and, and Junkie XL's previous scores, it was, it always seems a little dark with a hard edge to it. Um, so like for Fury Road, it's perfect. Um, and then I think he did like Alita Battle Angel, which was still pretty good, but it, you know, it, nothing of it yeah. made me go, oh man, the first Justice League movie. So I always had just a little bit of concern in the back of my head, but hearing this, I was like, oh, okay, like maybe, he, yeah, he's, he's stepping up and this sounds really cool, um, really promising. I'm excited for that. So I'm excited to hear more. I like what I heard. I, you know, I don't feel like it's a full theme yet because in my mind, a theme is something that you can then hum afterwards yeah. or, you know, this, to your point, sounded almost like a wall of sound. Yeah. Uh, so, but a very like hopeful, heroic wall of sound, which is what I liked about it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, I thought it was really cool. It was unexpected, you know, and, and a nice little preview of, of what we can look forward to and, I think it's crazy and cool that I'm just like I'm going to be able to watch a brand new Justice League movie. <laughs> I'm going to be able to buy a brand new Justice League score. So that'll be awesome. Yes, it will. Yeah. So very cool little preview there. But anyway, that uh, those were all like the I feel like the news items that really came out of today. So it wasn't as overwhelming uh, as far as news goes as the first day, but it was never going to be. But I was still impressed with with the amount of little nuggets and snippets we got from today. I'm not sure where it came from, um, but it's probably worth mentioning. I saw it all over social media when I first woke up this morning before I jumped on to the Fandome site, and that was the new Batman poster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't so know where they, that came from either, but yes, I saw it. Courtesy of Fandome, courtesy of Fandome. I'm like, well, I don't know where it was, but <laughs> it's cool. Like, it's been my lock screen since I woke up this morning, so... I haven't seen that. I'm going to just look for it now. It's cool. It's nothing really new. It's just, it's kind of... It's it's very red. (laughs) Yeah, it's red. Robert Pattinson's Batman is in profile, and then it's just the Batman logo. So, yeah, it was very cool. It was, again, no, no, like, reveal, really, but another cool little piece of marketing art for the Batman. They should have added a little lower face mask to Robert Pattinson (laughs) for this one. (laughs) I'm sure someone's already photoshopped that. Safety first. <laughs> it's kind of weird that you can see like what looks like like a part of a sideburn or something in the corner of the mask. It's a little bit odd, but it's a cool, cool image, though. All right. Uh, very cool. Okay, so uh, that's it. DC Fandom, day two. Still very cool. Yeah, I do feel like maybe they waited a little too long because I just didn't see the hype for it the way we did the first day. But hey, you live and you learn and then gives them opportunities for improvement next time. Yeah. Yeah, cool. they'll definitely be able to um, to take all of the, the, the feedback they will have gotten and um, tailor this if they do it again next year, you'd think. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. But very cool. Another big chunk of DC geeky content for us to enjoy. And uh, I didn't even have to stay up all night long. I got to sleep in, wake up, and enjoy it with my coffee. It was wonderful. Uh, But anyway, we did watch all of that, but we watched something else. We watched the next episode of Batman Beyond because we weren't sure if there was going to be enough from Fandom Day 2 to really fill an episode. So we're like, we're going to do the next Batman Beyond. Turns out, we had plenty from Fandome, but we watched it, so we're going to talk about it. So without further ado, it's time to dive in and review another episode of Batman Beyond. All right, last episode we watched was Eyewitness. So we are on to season two, episode number 15, Final Cut. This one aired on February 5th of the year 2000. 
Uh, written by Hilary J. Bader and directed by Butch Lukic. So, final cut. It turns out Karari is back. Remember her? She was the female assassin all in white with the blue skin and the sword that cuts through everything. I liked her. If I remember correctly, you didn't, Brendan, but I thought I she was did. cool. I did not. <laughs> I thought she. I think she's a cool new villain. That I like her. Navi looking bitch. <laughs> well, she's back, and she is after you, Brendan, because you don't get to call her that. Okay. Um, she's back, and apparently, uh, because she failed the first time, because Batman stopped her, uh, the League of Assassins is after her, and so instead of uh, instead of allowing them to get her, she is eliminating them one by one. So it opens up like there's this guy, he's kind of on the run. He's been staying in an airplane in the air for months on end because he knows that she will find him. And they have to land, and sure enough, as soon as they land, she gets on the plane and she gets him. Um, because it's a cartoon, she doesn't kill them, but she like throws an acid type thing on them that clears their minds, that gives them a mind wipe. Now... I got the impression as I watched it that maybe as written and animated, they were dead, and then they added in the dialogue later to say that they weren't. Yeah. <laughs> they just mind wiped. Because, like, they look dead. And whenever they, they said, whenever they said mind wipe, it was, like, not when you could see anybody's mouths moving. I just, maybe I'm being a conspiracy theorist, but I feel like they were supposed to be dead and then the network was like, no, you can't have them be dead. And they had to go back and dub in some different dialogue. That wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it's a, is it Mutro? Mutro Botha? Um, the Tim Curry character? He definitely looked dead. Oh, totally, totally. And, but they, yeah. Did you notice they even put in the sound of him breathing after he his, his mind was wiped? I didn't can, notice. Can I, yeah. can I interject for one second? You can what accent was Tim Curry speaking in? <laughs> That's an excellent question. I wondered the same thing. He was doing the, the Ulysses Claw voice before Ulysses I, There was like there was moments where he was so South African I was waiting for him to say diplomatic immunity. And then there were other moments he was so Australian I was waiting for him to say throw another shrimp on the Barbie. Like pick an accent. You can't, Tim. Brendan, you can't say that. That's racist against Australians. <laughs> I have Australian friends. Pick an accent, Tim, and stick to it. Jesus. Yeah, I was. I totally didn't know what it was, so I just was like, okay, maybe it's a made-up accent. I don't know. But I love that it was Tim Curry. I think that's yeah, that cool, cool as hell. Jess like, was, was actually watching it with me, and she was just like, is that someone doing a really bad Tim Curry impression? And I, I had to get IMDb, and I was like, holy shit, it's actually Tim Curry. It's Tim Curry doing a really bad Tim Curry. <laughs> he has no one to blame but himself no. <laughs> but anyway so yeah like his character I didn't even catch the character's name but he's like the last man standing he's the last one Karari has to go after and so he blackmails Batman into helping him uh, Bruce is out of town Terry's hanging out with Max Terry, Terry's actually happy he's like I get, you know, I get the city to myself I don't have to worry about Bruce this is great um, and of course then shit goes bad because that it always does it's Gotham City um, so this guy, Tim Curry, and like I said, I love that it's Tim Curry because we just had that conversation with Kevin Altieri talking about Tim Curry well, being the original Joker. Yes, but the listeners don't know that yet. Well, they'll hear it next week. They um, will. Something to look forward to. But I just love that, like, yeah, it didn't work out with him and the Joker, but hey, they, they threw him a bone and he got to be on ba Batman Beyond. I'll tell you what, if his Joker was anything like this performance... <laughs> I can totally see why it didn't work out. Oh, come on. That's Tim Curry. Don't get Curry, me dude. wrong. I love Tim Curry. He's, he's amazing. But that was, this was a mess. It was, wasn't good. Anyway, so he's back. He blackmails Batman. He's like, you got to help me stop Curari because she's coming after me. And after she gets me, she's coming after you. And Batman's like, tough. Not my problem. And he goes, well, it is your problem because I planted a bomb. And if uh, I don't keep punching in this code every 12 hours it goes off so the only way to help me is to stop curari and then we'll disable the bomb everybody's happy so he is reluctantly working with uh with this guy and they're trying to trap curari max goes rogue and tries to do a little investigating on her own and she runs into curari gets attacked um and so she feels really bad about it uh eventually curari does get tim curry gets him 
I say kills him, but apparently not. Just mind wipe, whatever. Uh, and they're like, well, great. That guy's out. We are, we're not sad about it. He was a jerk anyway. But now there's this bomb. And so Batman and Max work together. Max becomes, you know, a little helpful investigator and helps find where the bomb could be. They end up in this museum trying to find the bomb. Kirari intervenes. Big fight with Batman and Kirari while Max tries to find the bomb. Uh, and then eventually they find the bomb. They defeat Kirari. Uh, Max disables the bomb <laughs> in the uh, most uh, haphazard way. She just yanks it out and hopes it won't go off. But fortunately, it didn't go off. And she proves to be a great partner for Batman. So there you go. That is Final Cut. So, um, Jonathan, what did you think of this one? I liked it. Um, I'm, I'm fairly positive if it's, if it's Batman, even if it's not Bruce. Um, it's not the most exciting story ever, but it did what it, what I was expecting, which is it was high stakes and, and, you know, daft adventure. <laughs> um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought that the end uh, after Tim Curry was dead slash mind wiped, it was, I lost a little bit of my sort of comprehension of why um, Karari was still fighting Batman. Um, because I had, I must have missed why she cared about him. At first, she clearly cared about these assassins who had, I don't know, betrayed her or, or you know, who were going to kill her because she failed to kill someone. I don't mm. know why she was fighting. Well, it's Batman it's it's like what what Tim Curry said. He said, "Oh, after she gets me, she's coming after you because Batman was the reason she failed her right. job last time." There you go. So there you go. now she's taken out everybody who she blames, and he was the last one on the list. Cool. That's that was the only sort of thing that confused me. So if that was if that line was in there, then that's fine. Yeah, because that's the answer. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm not going to watch it again and again and again or anything, but yeah. It's good. Right. Nice. Brendan. Um, when the episode started and I saw it was Karari again, I was like, Jesus wept. This is going to be amazing. Because I did not like that character the first time around. Um, I still didn't like it this time around, but I will say the overall story I thought was better. Um, like, that was enough to keep me intrigued uh, than her first outing. So, yeah, I mean, it was it was a fine episode. Like it was nothing spectacular in my opinion, but again, I don't have a very high opinion of this show. Anyone who's listened before will know that, but yeah, I, even though what my expectations dipped incredibly when I saw it was her at the start, but I was very pleasantly surprised that the episode did, um, you know, pick up throughout. And it was the sort of the story with the, the weird Tim Curry character. Um, that uh yeah that, that made it interesting for me <laughs> um all right i really like this one actually i mean i i said i already like curari i thought i think she's a cool villain um but it wasn't just that i i like and i've said this before i like stories where bruce is away and it's up to the bat family to protect gotham without him i always think that's just a fun interesting story and i think it comes from i love the miniseries jo uh, robin 2 joker's wild it reminds me of that. That's a great miniseries, and it's just a great story conceit. So the fact that he can't rely on Bruce, he's got to do this himself. I love that. I love that Max really gets to step up in this one and become a true partner to Batman. I think it's a great moment, though, when she keeps calling him Terry, and he's like, stop calling me Terry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so like I, we, we've talked about in the past how, how much we like the character of Max and I like that she is, you know, truly out there in the field with him this time. I half expected her to suit up in one way or the other though. It didn't happen, but I kind of expected it. There was a um, moment when she said about Karari that like she stopped attacking her or something when she saw my face. So yeah. I was expecting maybe a twist that Karari was going to be somebody that they knew. Mm. But yeah, I yeah, think it was more just Karari only it, yeah. wants her target. And so once yeah. she realized Max wasn't the target, she just left her, which I also thought was kind of a neat angle too. Mm. Um, so yeah, I love that Max 
got such a big part in this. I think she's awesome. I love that she was invaluable to Terry in this. Um, and I also like that it didn't end the way you expected. And, and basically, Batman fails to protect this guy. And this guy, you know, becomes one of Curari's victims. And now they still have to figure out how to disarm the bomb because they can't count on this guy to do it for them. So they still have to figure it out. So now, you know, they're really in a bad situation and they've got no one else to look to but each other. So I really liked this episode. I thought it was great. Yeah, that's a raise the stakes moment, I suppose. It's escalating the danger because, yeah, they can't. I suppose you have to go there, don't you? If you're writing this, then you have to have Tim Curry be taken out so that they have to find another way in the... Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. Like yeah. plan A is help him, he'll disarm the bomb. Yeah. And then all of a sudden plan A is no longer an option. Now what do you do? Did you like how Terry called him broccoli after he'd been mind wiped? It's like a yeah. very G-rated way of calling someone a vegetable. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good one. So a uh, letter grade, uh, Jonathan. So um, I enjoyed it. I think B. I'm not familiar with the the letter grade system. What's the best that you can get? Uh, <laughs> um, a plus is the best. Okay. And uh, the worst is F is the worst. Do you guys okay. not have A through F in the UK? Um, at GCSE, yes. At A level, yes. But um. It, it's once every two years and yeah at 16 and at 18 it's not something that happens the rest of the oh, time oh interesting um yeah um so yeah i would say b all right brendan c okay brendan do you have a through f yeah oh okay this whole time i just assumed that we all had this oh okay that's <laughs> so what i get that is my that is my unconscious bias i apologize <laughs> for that i had no idea um I would give this one an A. I would. I thought it was good. And it was an actual Batman problem. It wasn't a high school problem. That's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, there you go. Uh, we're, we're running the gamut. An A, B, and a C for Final Cut. So the next one up, whenever we get to it, is The Last Resort. Oh, it sounds like vacation. That sounds nice. Cool. Bring me a drink with an umbrella, please. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, thanks for continuing to follow along as we watch Batman Beyond. And thank you, as always, for getting in touch with us. So we can't say goodbye until we check in with you all as we crack open the Wayne Manor mailbox. You've got mail. Okay, here we go. First message is from our pal Tom Fallows from Liverpool. He says, hey guys, uh, smugness was well and truly put in its place for gloating about the Batman starting filming in my hometown again. Uh, but best wishes to Robert Pattinson, of course. My question is this, um, what villain would you like to get a redo of in the Reeves's Bat Saga and what villain that hasn't appeared in a film do you want to see? Thanks for the podcast, Tom Fallows. Thanks, Tom. Uh, all right, so um, a villain that you want to get a redo and then someone who hasn't been in a film that you would like to see, Brendan. Redo would be Two-Face. And one that we haven't seen. See, my first thing that first jumped to mind was Black Mask, but then I totally forgot about Birds of Prey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, because yeah I would have liked to have seen that character played a little bit differently um, you haven't seen that's a really tricky one I know because we've seen so many yeah, but in a um, film he did say he did say in a film Poison Ivy's another one I'd like to see have a redo actually that's something I can yeah. Yeah. Um, Christ that's really we get some really good questions hey? they're hard to think of <laughs> the top of your head uh ma oh maybe harsh i don't know that's um you guys talk i'll, I'll keep thinking 
All right, Jonathan. I asked him first, so you had a minute to think. I was trying to be courteous, but Brendan's fucking worthless. Like he's nothing. Uh, do you have one, Jonathan? Um, yeah, I would see Mamba um, and focus on him and do something body horror and something that um, allows Bruce Wayne to sort of see how he might look to people. Uh, how Batman might appear to other people um, and, you know, not necessarily to be, uh, what's the word? Not, not that that might be a bad thing. He might be able to look at Mamba as a terrifying monster and, and even use it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. The Court of Owls as well. I think that's going to happen though, isn't it? Um, is that going to be in Maybe. the Maybe. 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 It Maybe. is It is speculated, but uh, we are unsure yet. Yeah. I think Man Bat, something like a, you know, like a, like a, a werewolf story, but told through the, yeah. um, through that character. And yeah, that would be my pick for a new one and, and a redo. I think I'm getting it's uh, Riddler and Catwoman. So I hope that Catwoman is a bit more Catwoman than she looked in the trailer. And I think that that, is likely um, based on I think Matt Reeves saying that these characters are going to go on a bit of a journey towards their sort of more familiar aesthetics. Mm -hmm. I hope that that happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Catwoman and Riddler, and I'm and I'm happy, and I'm getting that, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, for one, I I've never seen and would like to see. I agree with you. I was going to say Man Bat in the same way you did, which is yeah, do like a werewolf story with Man Bat. There's a yeah. lot of fun you can have with that. So for sure, um, I guess another one I'll throw out there is Mad Hatter. I think Mad Hatter um, can be very cool with the right approach. I actually really liked the Mad Hatter on Gotham, so I think that there are ways to do the Mad Hatter that aren't so campy that could be fun. Yeah. Um, and then as for a redo, I'm already getting Riddler, thank heaven. Uh, but my other favorite is Mr. Freeze. So yeah, I would love a much more grounded, uh, less punny Mr. Freeze. Yeah, the heart of ice, Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Uh, Brendan, yeah, any, any last yeah. minute thoughts? Yeah, I did think of one, and you're probably going to think I'm nuts, but Scarface. Okay. And the ventriloquist, like kind of by way of... Annabelle, you know, like, yeah, make it kind of freaky, not so much the funny gimmick, but, you know, have the ventriloquist be this really, you know, like, just silent, freaky, again, you could kind of do, like, a horror kind of thing with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, go that route as opposed to the, you know, the, the weird speech impediment and things like that. Yeah. Hmm. No, that's cool. Hey, I know he's got his fans, and I, I don't want to deprive Scarface fans, so I support it. Um, all right, next message is from uh, Baramos. I don't see any other name, so Baramos it is. It says, hey, uh, you've said in the past that you're a huge Riddler fan and also like to see when he is trying to turn over a new leaf and use his skills for good. I wanted to give you and any other Riddler fans a tip. Uh, check out Batman Confidential issues 26 through 28. It's not only the first time King Tut was in the comics as a particularly scary version compared to the show. It features the Riddler teaming up with Batman. It's a very enjoyable arc for Bat fans out there who are interested. Keep up the good work, Baramos. Thanks, Baramos. I need to check out Batman Confidential. I am going to find it on DC Universe because I want to see both of the things you mentioned. I want to see that, and I also want to see King Tut. I was reading Batman Confidential when it came out because that was at a period when um, Grant Morrison had taken over the, the monthly Batman run and it was just doing nothing for me because I, I just can't do Grant Morrison. Um, and like some of the story runs they did in that were really, really cool. And the thing I liked about it is they were short runs. Like each story was like, you know, maybe six issues max um, and they'd start something else completely different. Um, and yeah, I've got a few of the trades as well, and it's been a long time since I've read it, but it, yeah, I remember it being really cool, and it was kind of a big deal at the time that it was, yeah, the first time King Tut had been in the comics, and it wasn't the, the shtick of the, the 60s show, where mm. he was essentially uh, Maxi Zeus. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this message here is from Mark Bickford. It says, hey guys, 
Um, oh, this is interesting. It says, hey, Andy, Jamie, and the third string deputy assistant backup tambourine player for five seconds to summer, or five seconds of summer. Okay. <laughs> is is that an Australian thing? <laughs> yeah, the five seconds of summer. They're actually quite big internationally, but yeah, they're like a boy rock band, I guess. I feel like, like I have at least one or two songs by them. It sounds you, familiar. But you definitely would. What's that supposed to mean? What are you trying to say? I just, I, they had hits that were popular around the world, so that's okay. all I meant. Anyway, well, guess what? <laughs> you're you're the backup tambourine player. Congratulations. Okay, look, I'll take it. Uh, he says, fandom was amazing. I was able to put my butt in a chair at 1 p.m. and barely budge for eight incredible hours, but I have some thoughts. Uh, I'm glad they broke things up between two weekends. The original schedule had had the only run of the Titans panel opposite the first run for the Batman, and that was just impossible. Um, I'm sure you've heard by now, but the version of Hallelujah used in the Snyder Cut trailer was one of Autumn Snyder's favorite songs, and it was apparently played at her funeral. Um, Plus, while I agree that Leonard Cohen is not necessarily someone whose albums I want to bring along for a summer road trip with the sunroof open, his is the only version of the song that uses that particular... Even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord with song or the Lord of Song with nothing but with nothing on my lips but Hallelujah. Taken uh, with the scene at the end, my feeling is that this trailer wasn't so much a promotional piece for the film as it was a tribute to Autumn and a hat tip to fans who pushed the studio to complete it. Um, Regarding the trailer for the Batman, I'm glad that someone is actually following through on the dark noir detective story motif. I swear I've heard that concept teased multiple times for the different Nolan films, but they never actually went there. Um, Mark, it's a long one, so I'm going to skip some things here. Do, do, do. Uh, says here, it says there was a short clip on the Bat about Batwoman uh, where they asked the showrunner a question about what does this mean for the Batwoman-Supergirl relationship? And she responded with, she'll be figuring out her place amongst all these superpowered beings. Uh, doesn't she realize how well that friendship between Kate and Kara worked? You've seen crossovers, and yes, maybe. I trust anyone here with my life, including you, was a bit forced, but those two characters really hit it off, uh, and they couldn't even bother to acknowledge the specialness of that relationship. I've said enough, but I'll leave you one last thought related to fandom. This Ray Fisher thing is never going to get better, is it? Thanks for always. Looking forward to exploring the multiverse, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Um, all right, what, are, what do we got here? Uh, hallelujah, the dark, detec- the dark detective noir of the Batman, and then Batwoman and Supergirl. So, um, Brendan, thoughts? Um, I mean, it, that would make sense if that if you know if they've done that with Hallelujah. I still don't like. I'm, okay, I don't dislike the song. I just don't like Leonard Cohen's version, even though it's the original. I just don't like Leonard Cohen. Like he talks, he doesn't sing. Um, the Batwoman thing. Look, I mean, I I liked the first season. I, I have little interest in continuing with the show. Um, I I think they should have just recast the role of Kate and just carried on. Um, I think they've made something very like overly convoluted when it didn't need to be. Um, so yeah. And what was the last thing? Um, oh yeah, the, the Detective Noir. Thing, yeah, it ain't going oh, oh oh yeah, that. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, thoughts on these things? Uh, yeah. Um... With regards to Hallelujah, same as, as Brennan. I mean, if if it was a tribute, then that's that's a nice thing. Um, the the Batman being what was the words used? Um, dark and gritty. Uh, detective, dark noir. Dark noir. Yeah. I mean, that if you'd um, if you'd said to me, "What do you want from an, another Batman film?" I don't think that's what I would have said. But um, the trailer for it completely convinced me that I'm. Um, gonna enjoy it i think the um you know i was i was i was one goth um gotham in i think like you and in like you would say in the fall um i would say in the mm-hmm. autumn winter snowy gotham and i'm i'm fairly happy um the trailer's great and and it's batman isn't it it's not when you watch that trailer you think yes that's that's batman um, he's always a bit like that, except for in two films, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
And um, yeah, I haven't seen the back end of the first season of Batwoman, so I don't know. Um, I, I couldn't follow those points. Um, yeah. And yeah. what was the fourth? Oh, Ray Fisher. Yeah. I mean, we'll just wait and see what happens and hope everybody um, is treated fairly, I suppose. There you um, go. That works for me. Um, yeah. So the Batwoman thing, I, I understand your point. Cause yeah, like the, the Kate and Kara relationship was awesome and it's just not going to be the same. And yeah, um, we'll see what they do and how they approach it. But yeah, it's, it's not the same because those two actors had, had chemistry and, and that was a nice highlight. Um, the dark noir detective Batman. Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm here for it. You're right. It's something that's been talked about and asked for, for many, many years. And now we are getting it and I can't wait. Um, and then as for hallelujah, um, yes, like I, after that came out, you know, I actually got quite a few DMS being like, yeah, but it was a tribute to his daughter. And I appreciate that. And I respect that. That's, you know, of course, you know, my heart goes out to the Snyders with the loss of autumn. Um, it still doesn't make the song less annoying. Like it's still an annoying song, no matter what reason you put it in there. It doesn't make me like the song. I respect the reason. I still doesn't. I still don't have to like the song, and I still think the song distracted from the trailer instead of enhanced it. Yeah, I agree just, with that. That's just my opinion. For people who love the song and thought it was wonderful and it, and actually enhanced the visuals, great. For me, I thought it detracted from the visuals. Yeah, I agree. As soon as it started, I thought, oh. It's it's that song again, and I stopped thinking about the images that were appearing in front of me. So that's not the right way around, I suppose. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, again, I, I I totally am sympathetic um, about about being a tribute. Um, it's just for me, it just it was a combination of visuals and music that didn't work for me. Um, all right. Next message is from Weston Craig. It says, Hey guys, what's your favorite DC comics crossover? And also which DC villain do you find most relatable for me? It's Dr. Langstrom before his transformation. Um, thanks Weston. Okay. Favorite DC comics crossover and a relatable DC villain. Uh, Brendan. Crossover. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm going to be boring to say Superman and Batman. (laughs) <laughs> is that the sort of thing yeah it's think? unclear if like like i i thought he meant maybe like a crossover story or a crossover event uh i'm not too sure like i mean would yours be public enemies because it's super random yeah <laughs> yeah let's say public enemies that was really cool um and then relatable character oh boy Jesus, sending in some thinkers tonight. Um, I know, I know, making you work for it. Relatable. It's so bizarre because I don't know if there's really any that I can can really re- Yeah, I don't know if I can actually really relate to any of them. I mean, I mean this in a good way. I don't think I'd want to relate to most of the people because the thing is, in Batman's world, like everyone's kind of effed up in in some way shape or form um i don't know maybe maybe relatable to someone like a leslie tompkins um you know, <laughs> is, try is she your favorite dc villain is leslie tompkins <laughs> oh was it was it relatable villain yeah oh i thought it was my relatable character um a relatable villain yeah i ooh, that's a tough one i i don't know I don't really think I have an answer for that one. Well, again, think they, about it. Think about it while Jonathan really answers. <laughs> Jonathan? Uh, yeah, relatable. Um, does, does Selena Kyle, Catwoman, Batman Returns count? I as think a so. Villain? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I identify with her, um, which is a little weird insight into my strange brain. Um, the Yeah, she's got this very sort of downtrodden eyes on the floor, sort of Catholic vibe that I relate to um and but also this sort of you know more um yeah I was pushed out of a window by my boss no um oh oh wow the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't um, no the Catwoman in, in Batman Returns is one of the reasons I like that film so much um because I know there's not that much Batman in that 
film, I think. But um, and I guess if it's just like in terms of being um, the the villain's motivation being not necessarily relatable but understandable, then I would say Zod in Man of Steel because he's um, his character is is developed to such an extent that you can see what's driving him, even if you don't think he's right. Because um, mm-hmm. obviously he's not right. Because destroying one planet to create another one is is a horrible, you know, crime against humanity or whatever. But um, but you can see how he got there. Um, the That's Joker. Yeah. Brilliant. That's a brilliant yeah. answer, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, the Joker in the Dark Knight. I'm not saying he's relatable, but again, um, he's very consistently depicted. I think and. Um, yes, he sort of pivots from one plan to another, um, but it does feel like there is a consistent motivation behind it all, which is just to to really unsettle everybody and um, make them feel unsafe at a kind of fundamental level, and that that will then drive them into dark spaces. Um, again, not relatable. I'm not saying that that's what motivates me in the morning, but. I again, I can see the the mind at work and understand it, um, even if I'm not, yeah, on board with him <laughs> clearly. Right, right. What was, was uh, another question about the DC uh, Comics crossover? crossover. Yes, um, I mean it's easy for me. It's, it's we've mentioned it. The Flashpoint is the one I like the most. I think right. if we're talking an event. Nice. Yeah, I love that. Uh, for DC Comics crossover, I loved Armageddon 2001 back in the 90s. I loved it. I was obsessed with it. Oh, my God. I thought it was the best thing ever. So I have a very special place in my heart for that one. But more recently, Identity Crisis, I think, is just an amazing mm-hmm. story. I think it's top tier and a, a, a great crossover. Um as for a relatable DC villain, I was having a hard time too until I heard you talk, Jonathan, and because you mentioned Catwoman in Batman Returns, it made me think of the Penguin in Batman Returns. And what most people don't like about that version of the Penguin is my favorite thing about that version is just the tragic nature of the character in that version. Um, you know, I've, I do a lot of podcasts, I talk about a lot of movies, but you'll notice that I always have a certain affection for movies about the outcast. Yeah. I love Edward Scissorhands because of the outcast element. I love The Hunchback of Notre Dame because of the outcast element. And that version of the Penguin, he does some horrible things. He's evil. He is an a-hole. But there's this very tragic side of him because he's an outcast and he can't belong. And yeah. that's something I've wrestled with my entire life is I've just never really belonged. Um, and so I, I just feel a kinship to those type of characters. So again, I'll never cheer on what the penguin does in that film, but I still can have sympathy for him because I know that feeling of you, you don't fit in anywhere. Yeah. That's another good one. I can relate to the penguin too, because all I ever wanted was unlimited poon tang and I never got it. <laughs> You know, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I guess you got to work on your French flipper trick. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. This next email is from Joe Kingsley. It says, hey, guys, hope all is well. Um, I sure I speak for everyone in hoping that you've had your fair share, <laughs> your fair share of handies lately. <laughs> in refra- that, in line, ref- that line got a lot of uh, attention. <laughs> <laughs> that was a few episodes ago um anyway he says first uh god that batman trailer looks dark just uh just how it should be in my reckoning secondly a message for the annoying little australian as he's interested in world war ii uh, listen listen joe nobody beats up brendan but me okay no. if i show if some I'm respect looking, if i'm looking for a beating i know where i'm going to that's right Speaking of handies, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he says, because you're interested in World War II, did you know that Burgess Meredith was a captain in the U.S. Air Force during the war and was the star of a promotional film called Welcome to Britain, made in 1943, teaching American soldiers how to adjust to life in England during the war? I found this out recently, and it's very... Um, I think there's a, a typo. It's very interesting. I'm, I'm su- or entertaining. Maybe you say um, it's definitely worth a look. I hope this is of interest to the annoying little man. All the best, Joe from England. Oh, he's from England. That's why you guys hate each other. Do we? 
I don't know. I, I, I got the impression that, like, England and Australia is always fighting. Only oh. on the sporting field. I mean, it's you guys are getting along okay. I mean, we're, we're the... Talking of the... Out, you know, speaking of outcasts, like, we're the, the prisoners, man. Like, <laughs> we're the ones they threw away. But, look, I, I, I appreciate... I did not know that about Burgess Meredith. I do find that really interesting. So I appreciate you reaching out to tell me that. Um... I don't appreciate the backhanded, well, not even the backhanded, the straight, straight up insults. Um, but sh- you know what? Water off a duck's back, my friend. Water off a penguin's back. There you go. Water off a koala's back. Yes. We're a platypus. Um, all right. Well, now you know. The more you know. Um, all right, next message is from Bruno. It says, hey, Bat Boys, how you doing? I've been listening for a while now, uh, all the way from Amsterdam in the Netherlands, but this is my first time writing in. On the previous episode, Brendan mentioned that he's cherry-picking graphic novels nowadays. It's something I've been doing for a while because the whole single-issue format never really spoke to me. Also, it's kind of scary to jump in at random, and I never know where to start. So my question, which graphic novels do you recommend? Personally, I only like DC. I've read a couple Marvel ones, but they just don't do it for me. Some that I've already read, The Dark Knight Returns, The Killing Joke, The Long Halloween, Deceased, Black Mirror, Flashpoint, and Kingdom Come. Sorry for the long email, guys. Keep up the good work. Greetings, Bruno. Thanks, Bruno. And see, Brandon, Bruno likes you because he's from, he's from the Netherlands. They like you better there. You're a that's, much bigger deal in the Netherlands than you are in the UK. That's fantastic. Um, all right, graphic novels for Bruno to check out, but he's already gotten he's already got a lot of the big ones, so now we got to dig a little bit deeper. So uh, first, I'll start just because I just said it. Identity Crisis. You will not regret it. Money back guarantee. Read Identity Crisis. Um, Brendan, thoughts? Um, give me two seconds. Okay, I'm Jonathan, thoughts? Looking, I'm looking at my comicsology. <laughs> <laughs> um, so read me the list again that he's read already. I think he said Dark Knight Returns, Killing Joke, The Long Halloween, Deceased, Black Mirror, Flashpoint, and Kingdom Come. Okay, um, Dark Victory. Then if he likes Long Halloween, yeah, um, good call. Love that. The there's a scene where, and you probably Andy love this because you're a big Robin fan, where you get the um, Bruce being comforted by Alfred as a child and Robin being comforted by Bruce at the same, like in the same way. And um, do you remember there's like uh, in dark um, victory? Yes. Yeah. I think, um, I, that's been on my to read list for like five years and I've still not read it. I'm so sorry. Ah, no, read it. It's, it's good. It's really good. It's um, literally like on my iPad, like ready to be read. I just haven't gotten to it. I just get distracted. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so do I, believe me. Um, and, and really, really bizarre, random one. And it's not a graphic novel and it's not even very good, really. But it was my favorite when I was little. It was, uh, it was called The Ultimate Riddle. And it's got Judge Dredd in it, which is very oh. odd. Um, Batman, like the Riddler gets this very powerful object and he whisks Batman away to like a... Uh, a matrix style sort of land that he's constructed himself because of this powerful thing that he's got. And he creates like a contest with all of these different sort of um, monsters from around like the multiverse or whatever. And uh, yeah, so Batman has to, he's sort of pitted against Judge Dredd and then a bunch of these other made up characters. It's really good. Um, It's also probably not really good, but I look back on it really fondly because um, yeah, it was uh, my favorite. And I was like 12 years old, right after the Batman Forever came out, which is probably why it was published, because the Riddler was ah. the, the villain. Okay. So yeah, the ultimate riddle. Try that. It's not too I've long. never it's read that one. I'm going to see if it's on, uh, com- or not Comixology, DC Universe. Um, yeah, Brendan, had, did you look at your shelf? Did you find yeah. something? I, well, that's the problem. I, my, all my comics are packed away at the moment, so I just oh. had to quickly grab my comicsology. Yeah, look at comicsology, yeah. Yeah, um, Superman Secret Origin, um, Green Lantern Ooh, Secret that, Origin. Yeah. They're both good. Um, uh, bah, 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 where are we here? Uh, there's a Wonder Woman graphic novel. Um, it's a sh- it's a really really good read, but it's a shame that it sort of didn't go anywhere. Like it never got a second story arc, which is a real shame. Which was why is it not showing on my? It was I think it was like the uh, the 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 Legend of Wonder Woman. 
um, that I thought was really, really cool. Um, but it, it's 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 quite thick, but it's it's a really, really good read. Um, yeah, it was yeah, the Legend of Wonder Woman. There it is. Um, I do think that again, it's not really a graphic novel, and I've said it before, but I, I do really like the the Batman Adventures run. Um, mm-hmm. You know, from back mm-hmm. then. Gotham, Gotham Central, the first few trades of that are really good. Uh, what else have I got here? Yeah, this is, I mean, obviously, like, stuff too. I mean, again, it's Batman Adventures, but, like, Mad Love um, is worth mm-hmm. your time. Um, yeah. It's... All right. That's, I mean, that's that's a great start. That's a lot of good yeah. stuff. Um, yeah, a couple, a couple others I'm trying to think of... Uh... Like Hush, what you you didn't say you'd read Hush, so you got to read Hush. That's that's a, a must. Um, Gotham by Gaslight is another really uh, famous cool. one. Um, if you love Robin, like I love Robin, I love the the two Robin miniseries where Tim Drake, uh, you know, becomes Robin. So I'd read those. I would also read the collected editions of Death and Return of Superman or uh, Nightfall. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are iconic stories, and now that you can get them collected in a graphic novel, it's a great way to, to read that entire arc from beginning to end. Same thing with uh, Court of Owls. You can do that as well. Um, so, yeah, like it's, sometimes it's just about the bundled arcs from the monthlies once they eventually make it to a, yeah. a, a trade, I think, is a good way of doing it. So those are some good ones. Oh, another one I'll throw out there just because it came up, I think, on Twitter is Batman Noel. So yeah. in time for mm. Christmas, read Batman Noel. Uh, Robin because year we were talking is good as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were talking on the last episode about the animated DC films, and we were like, they kind of have done all the biggies. Um, and someone tweeted us, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, but was like, hey, what about Batman Noel? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, please animate that. So I have a Christmas movie to watch. So um, that would be another good one. So there's there's a lot of options for you, but yeah, enjoy. Oh, Superman Birthright. Oh, I just read that one actually. That one was really good. I really like that. Is Birthright um, when Lex is a teenager in Smallville? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. I watched yeah. that way. I read that when um, in the build-up to Man of Steel. Yeah, I just read that one like a month ago, um, and it was really good. Yeah. This this see this is why I love DC Universe. Sorry, you guys, you, you don't have it, but this is why I love it is because like yeah, I'm finally catching up on all these stories that I missed the first time around and. I just am diving into them. And that Superman graphic novel that I was trying to think of maybe in the last episode of the one before, um, I'll recommend it again here, which is Superman Secret Identity. It's really good. Mm-hmm. It's that Elseworldsy one where it's a guy named Clark Kent who lives in a world where the Superman comics exist and he wakes up one day with the powers of Superman. It's really cool. Nice. All right, next message is from Scott Brown. It says, hey guys, did you ever notice the Batman 89 cameo in the Dark Knight Returns animated movie? Batman lifts it to test his mech suit enhanced strength before facing off with Superman. I thought it was cool and I had never noticed it before rewatching it today. Love the show, Scott. Um, Scott, oh yeah, of course. I love that moment. Like, did we ever review the animated version of that? I don't know if we ever did on this show. Of what one? Dark Knight Returns. Oh, I'd have to go back and check, but I'm, I'm sure you and Jamie would have come knowing Jamie. I feel like we never have. Hmm. What I honestly can't remember. It's been ages since I've seen that. What's the Easter egg? It was the '89 Batmobile. Batman picks it up. Oh, did, I honestly can't remember, but I'm sure I, I think would have you noticed were, it. You were still looking at your comicsology, weren't you? No, you didn't hear. You didn't hear a word I said. I, I, I heard about the Easter egg, but I didn't hear that it was the Batmobile. <laughs> you didn't hear what movie we were talking about either. Yes, you were I did. reading comics. You were reading no, comics. It it's a Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> All right. Anyway, yes, it's a great Easter egg. And I, shockingly, I do not believe we've done that, that episode. We did the book, but I don't think we ever did the animated version. Oh, wow. Um,. I know, weird, huh? Um, maybe it came out before the show was a thing. When oh, was that yeah, released? The, it was 2012, 13? Yeah, so that was that was before I started the show. I started the show in 2014. Mm. Um, yeah, I would have thought 
Jamie That's probably why. All over that. Yeah, yeah, we've never gone back to it. All right. Um, all right, next message is from Jason Ritter. It says, hey, Pumpkin Spice Andy, Brendan, and Gorilla Grodd. Uh, it says, I've been listening to the Real Fans Flintstones episodes, and I was wondering, would you like <laughs> to see the... Did you, would you like to see the Flintstones with Scooby-Doo or Batman? Uh, just so you know, I, was, I saw Viva Rock Vegas before the original movie. I didn't even know there was one until years later. Here's my Batman question. I saw rumors that Reverse Flash won't be the villain in the Flash movie, so who would you want as the villain? My last question, will we get a Batman Returns commentary for Christmas? Anyway, have a good show. Stay healthy, Jason Ritter. Thanks, Jason. Um... Last question first, Batman Returns commentary for Christmas, probably not this year, because I, you know, we usually like to wait for an anniversary before we do one of those. So what's the next anniversary? 30 years? It'll be 30 years in 2022. Yeah, so maybe in two years would be a good, a good time to do it. Um, so Flintstones and Batman, I don't know how that would work, but I would still buy it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I will say iTunes like put all their DC stuff on sale again because of Fandom Day 2, and I did finally buy the compiled episodes of Scooby-Doo and Batman. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. No, yeah. I've had that on DVD for a while. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. I was like, oh, I don't think I own that, so let me just buy it. What the hell? Um, Batman question. Who would you like to be the villain in the Flash movie? Jonathan, I'll let you go first. The villain in the Flash movie. So the, if, uh, this if it's is not the Flash reverse point. Flash, yeah. If it's not reverse flash, um, I mean it, it has to be a flash villain. I would I would think because the I mean obviously I would be tempted to throw in a Batman character for myself, but um, I mean I I don't know if you can do the flashpoint without the reverse flash. I know, right? Like that, because who else? Yeah, who else could be messing with the timeline with Barry? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't think I, I don't know anyone who could. Hmm. Who especially not if it's a flash villain. I mean you couldn't have Captain Boomerang. Right, right. right. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. I haven't got an answer for that. Um I say just keep it at the as the reverse flash and, and Yeah, I guess for people who love the T V show and, and have seen sort of other speedy characters a lot they might think go another direction but you'd have to change the film into something completely different so maybe the sec that like a sequel to the flashpoint movie mm-hmm. um and then grod just for the fun i think yeah um, <laughs> that that would be what i would want to see brendan thoughts um i'm I'm going to cheat a little bit and say that, yes, Captain Boomerang, but I would want to see Flash versus the Rogues. So, you know, Captain Cold, yeah. Weather yeah. Wizard, yeah. you know, Trickster, all, you know, yeah. Heat Wave, all those guys together, like, have a full-on Flash versus the Rogues movie. That's what I'd want to see. But again, it, I, I can't see that working in a movie where you're essentially doing Flashpoint. Like, you need to have that time-traveling villain, so... Right. Yeah, I agree. I like if it was not a time travel movie, I, I my answer would be the same. Flash versus the Rogues. But because it is a time travel movie, like it kind of has to be reverse Flash. I don't even know who else it would be. Like you could do like Zoom, but that's just another version of the same thing. So why even bother? Yeah. You know, so yeah, that's a surprisingly tough question. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, um, we're getting we're getting long, so I'm going to do one more email and then we're going to be done. Uh, the rest we're going to save for next time. This because this one's about Fandom Day Two, so I thought we should read it. This is from Brad Date. It says, "Hey guys, I wasn't sure if you're going to cover Day Two, but I want to give my two cents. I know people were complaining that a lot of the content could already be found on YouTube, but I enjoyed it as I wouldn't have bothered looking for a lot of those videos on YouTube anyway." I noticed a lot of videos dedicated to the Gotham TV show, which kind of surprised me. I watched Gotham right from its premiere to its final episode. Watching these fandom videos made me think that maybe Gotham was a better show than it was given credit for. It was certainly a unique looking show, unlike many of the CW shows that all feel kind of the same. What do you think? Was Gotham overall an underrated show that deserves more credit? I'm seriously seriously thinking of doing a binge rewatch. 
Anyway, hope you're staying safe, and thanks for all that you do for us Bat fans. Cheers, Brad Dade. Uh, thanks, Brad, and surprise, we covered day two, but I'll tell you, I did not notice that there was a lot of Gotham-related content in there, so I missed that. Um, I did see there was something in there, but it wasn't something I, I looked out for. Um, but to your question, is it underrated that maybe deserves a second chance? What do you think, Jonathan? Um, okay, not in my opinion, but that's my personal feelings. I, I'm not a fan of, of Gotham. I, I stopped watching it in the first season. I think the... It felt haphazard. Um, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say anything negative about any any kind of Batman related um, content. So uh, no, I don't think it's underrated. Um, but you know, all the best to anyone who really loves it because I um, I you know I like things that other people don't like too. So yeah. I, <laughs> That's my, my such a British gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, ten years ago, I would have been a lot more um, sort of <laughs> um, cutting about about things I didn't like. But I've, I've, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like to criticize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, what do you? What about you, Brendan? Do you think that Gotham deserves another chance? I was going to say, Jonathan's, you know, the nice, proper British gentleman. <laughs> we're the we're the criminals that they threw on this island, and for good reason. Because you know what? I will criticise. <laughs> no, nah, like, yeah, I, I joke, but I, I, yeah, I obviously like virtually all things Batman. Like, you know, Batman Beyond. That's a bit of a different different story, but. Gotham, I had high hopes for. I enjoyed the first season. It, it was some things I didn't like, but I enjoyed it overall. I mean, I I just tapped out partway through season three. It just it got it got to the point where I just had no interest in it. And for a live action Batman show to do that to me, yeah. that takes us. That's that's some special quality right there. Whether it's good or bad, like. It, it made me not want to watch it, and I'm a diehard Batman fan, so props to Bruno Heller for that. Um, he did redeem himself with the first season of uh, Pennyworth, but even towards the end there, it started to get very wild and Bruno Heller, and I'm like, ooh, here we go again. Um, so I'm hoping that, that season two of that will be good. But yeah, I, I, it's, it's not for me. I know Andy watched it all the way through. I... I stopped partway through season three. I did jump back on for the last two episodes um, just because I wanted to see the the finale to sort of how it did end up. And everything that had occurred during the time that I didn't watch, just from seeing where characters were when I left them to where they were in the finale, I don't need to see how they got there. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I've always had the same... <laughs> <laughs> They've always taken the same stance when it comes to Gotham, which is like, uh, like it and accept it for what it is, but it's messy. And some of it I think is cool and some of it I think is nonsense. And uh, your <laughs> your uh, willingness to overlook the nonsense for the cool stuff is completely up to you. So I know some people loved Gotham. They thought it was great. Some people hated it. I was in between. I liked it okay, but I, I was never going to go, it's amazing, you're missing out, because it, it wasn't, but it was. It had its moments. Um, but yeah, if you can embrace the insanity, I think that a rewatch, you know, if you already kind of like it, a rewatch I don't think is bad, um, but I would just never tell someone, oh man, you're missing out, you better go watch it, because I don't want to be held responsible for that. Look, I did just spend a minute or two shitting on it, but I will say that it it's still like it has my favorite live action alfred moment of all time came from gotham there's you know with uh young bruce wayne young tommy elliott and bruce's father's watch is all i'll say people who watch the show will know exactly what i'm talking about that was amazing um and yeah still my favorite alfred moment on on live action mm. i mean i will say like they gave me a great Riddler. They gave me a great Penguin. They gave me a great Mr. Freeze. They gave me a great Scarecrow. So for that, 
great fish mooney. And a great fish Finally. mooney. Finally. The best fish mooney. The, the one I've been waiting my whole life to see. So, anyway, there you go. Uh, take that as you will. But anyway, yeah. right now we're going we're gonna to close the mailbox because uh, it's getting late and we got stuff to do. So we're going to hang on to any emails that are left. We're going to read them next time uh, on our Batman Day episode. And again, make sure you check out the Batman Day episode because that is also going to include Brendan and my discussion with Kevin Altieri about his work on Batman the Animated Series. So look forward to that. It's about a week from now. Please check that out. I think you will enjoy it. But we're going to wrap this baby up. Jonathan... Thanks yes. for joining, and congratulations on your first episode of Holy Batcast. Thank you very much. It's been absolutely the coolest thing. So, yeah, I've had a lovely time. Oh, good. Well, it was lovely having you. Uh, tell our friends where they can follow you if they'd like to. Oh, cool, yeah. Um, on Twitter, I'm John underscore Muck, so J-O-N underscore M-C-K. Um, that's about it, really. I'm not elsewhere particularly. Um, you said you but, do you, you do podcasts or you don't do podcasts or you said you I, did. I used to podcast with my partner here in our home, but the the momentum was completely um, stopped when the lockdown started because we had the children here um, 24 uh, hours a day, seven days a week. So we couldn't keep doing it. So we used the time when they're at school to batch them up. Um, now that they're it. back in school, maybe we'll start up again, but... Um, because we don't know for sure that the schools are going to stay open yet, um, we're not investing a lot of energy into into starting up because we might have to stop again. So, ah, I uh, see. when there's a vaccine, then um, yeah, we we talk about films and we talk about TV shows. So same sort of vibe. Awesome, very cool. Yeah. Well, it was great having you, and yeah, give Jonathan a follow on Twitter so that way, whenever he does start up his podcast again, you can find out about it. Yes, and uh, I have. Um, can I mention I have a film? That will oh, be so okay. Yeah, um, that that is more. That's more definitely happening than any more podcast. So, um, yeah, if you follow me on Twitter and ask about that, I'll, I'll go into detail. But I won't take your time up now. Very cool. No, that's great. Awesome, um, Brendan. As always, our Sunday night ritual remains. It sure does. It's a way to see out the weekend. Yeah. I go to to sleep and just dream of you. (laughs) Same, same. Um, (laughs) People know where to find you, but tell them anyway, just in case. Uh, You can find me on Twitter at Loey007, and you can find my podcast, The Nightlight, at NightlightPod, facebook.com slash The Nightlight, and thenightlight.podbean.com. Excellent. Uh, So yeah, give these two gentlemen a follow. I already told you where to follow me, but thank you as always for joining us and for downloading the show. Please do subscribe so you never miss an episode. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. And as Michael Keaton's Batman says, I want you to tell all your friends about me. Visit HolyBatCast.com and find Holy Batcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. It's just Holy Batcast. If you've got a message for the Wayne Manor mailbox, you can send that to HolyBatcast at RF4RM.com. You can also enjoy all the other shows that are in the network at RF4RM.com. Most recently, because we are getting close to spooky season, we just did a new Real Fans for Real Movies where we talked about good horror remakes. So check that out at rf4rm.com or just search for Real Fans for Real Movies. If you are interested in starting to get into a spooky mood as we get towards the fall or the autumn, you can check that out. It's a good way to kick it off. So yeah, check those out. Um, But that'll do it. On behalf of Jonathan and Brendan, I've been Andy. Uh, This has been Holy Batcast. We'll see you next time in time for Batman Day. And you know where. Same bat time, same bat channel. Cast is brought to you by Real Fans for Real Movies. Remember, the thoughts and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone, and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. I can't tell you how excited I am. Ta-da! But, uh...
there's a lot of work that needs to be done, obviously, even though I already did a lot of work. Um, so right now I'm in the middle of finishing an action bit with the new Justice League theme, and I want to preview a little bit of that. So let me play you a little bit of that theme in action mode. Please. 